Even the high-end restaurants need to have a dumpster. Despite the glamour of the guests and the quality of the decor, food waste is food waste, and it belongs in a slimy heap in a giant metal corrugated cube in the back alley. The rats in Hong Kong know this. We open with an aerial shot of one such back alley. It's pissing rain, but the rats are bold and unbothered. Big gray sons of bitches cavorting around in trash, fur plastered to the fat bodies, sniffing of the choicest morsels. We see that this is a long and twisted alley. And as we slowly zoom in past the sad laundry, unfortunately left out to dry, and past the strings of twinkling red lights strung across the alley from balconies on either side, and past the sagging awnings over back doors, we see the ambient light of this city reflected off the glistening face of a man. He's overdressed for the alley and underdressed for the deluge, trying vainly to light a cigarette. We watch the man turn back to the yellow light of a doorway, struggling with his lighter. We watch a second cloaked figure approach and almost casually subdue the man, putting him down with a few deft strikes and kicking his body into the bags of garbage nearby. The camera follows over the shoulder of the attacker who stops in the doorway to consider the room beyond and passes him out of the dark and rainy afternoon into the warm yellow light of a bustling kitchen. We see some 20 odd cooks and dishwashers hustling around counters covered in food, pots steaming and boiling on cooktops, knives brandished expertly over stalks of vegetables and swiftly scaling fish. We deftly move between these and onwards through a wide yellow hallway and through a tinkling beaded curtain into the dining room. There are circular tables draped in fine white linen. There are sprays of greenery and decorative columns there's a fish tank sporting a few lazy white and orange koi. There are paintings of temples and mountain landscapes. Amongst the diners, at a table modestly tucked off to one side, a meeting is taking place. A man and a woman sit in a business-like tete-a-tete, poring over some paperwork, their dumplings half-eaten and off to one side. The woman is Dr. Lorraine Kwan, an operations manager of the Golden Candle Company and is the reason you are all here, to act as her security escort as she talks business with a government representative for geological survey. You have been assigned here with your friend and colleague, Mei Ong, who leans coolly behind a wide-stemmed plant near the hostess station. She sports her signature hairstyle, a neat and shiny black bob, and wears a fitted silk dress. She's the kind of woman who you know from experience to be very capable with the sharp knives she is no doubt concealing somewhere on her long-limbed person. May seems on edge. She's been filing her oval nails with a steel file in brusque strokes indicating impatience. She stows the file in her clutch and brushes some condensation off the front window, peering outside at a parked car and the man inside. Harlan, who does she see when she looks your way and what are you up to? <laughs> mm, Jack Green's the name. I don't know how the fuck I ended up here. All I know is I got a hangover. I could kill a small child. Is there anybody out on the street smoking at this time? Yeah, you see a couple of dudes. They're like huddled under um, a convenience store awning just a, a couple of doors down. But uh, they, they look kind of preoccupied with themselves. Well, I know I'm out of smoke, so uh, I step out of the car. And through the rain, I make my way over to those guys. <clears throat> Hey, uh, Yo-Yo, you got an extra cigarette? Yo-Yo, the shit are you saying, man? Oh, sorry, I didn't know you spoke, uh... Well, listen, I didn't mean to offend, uh, I just wanted to know if you could borrow a cigarette, I'm fresh out. <laughs> yeah, sure, here you go. The one guy gives you a cigarette and kind of looks you up and down. Oh, thanks, man. Not from around here, are you? No, 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 American. Born and bred, Iowa. You gotta hear my story, it's a good one. But, hey, you, you gotta... got a uh, light, I just, I don't have anything Pretty good accent for an American. He hands you his lighter. Well, look, I, I took it out of the, uh, you know, I, you watch those movies. You ever seen those, uh, thank you. You ever seen those good movies that are on TV around here? Look, hey, I love Hong Kong. This is a good town. You found a job like that, no problem, driving this here car. And I point to the, what what car am I driving? Uh, What car are you driving? It's like a nice black, almost like a limo. Yeah, totally. That's uh, driving that. 
you got anything hanging in the af uh, like the rear view mirror? Yeah, it's like three of those smelly scented things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like three of them, and they're they make they look like little Chinese lanterns. The one guy like braves the the rain just long enough to kind of step out on the sidewalk to get a better look at the car. He's like, "That's nice, man. Where'd you get that?" Pretty nice, right? You wouldn't believe it if I told you. I got a job. Barely even know who I'm working for. It's a perfect job. All I have to do is sit out in that car, out in front of that restaurant there. Some broads in there. I don't even know. Telling me. Very interesting. And who do you work for again? Uh, I don't know. Uh, do I know? Yeah, Golden Candle Company. Yeah, the Golden Candle Company. You know, they make those, uh, well, I got to say Golden Candles. I'm not too uh, literate with what you guys, I don't know. Um, what, do you have police or detec detective skills, Harlan? No, I have driving cars, rock, and beer, and sports. Okay, cool. <laughs> Why don't you roll a police check untrained for me? So that's a seven. Fucking eight. happily. So I have a swerve of one. Great. Plus seven, so eight. So eight. Yeah, these guys seem on the up and up. Having a nice, pleasant conversation with you. Oh, what do you look like, by the way? Uh, who have you cast to play Marion Green? Uh, Harlan Guthrie? No, I'm Kurt. I'm, I for sure look like Kurt Russell, but with a beard and a bit more handsome, obviously. Wonderful. Okay, so Kurt Russell with a beard, very handsome, outside chatting up these uh, Chinese dudes who are out smoking. Um, so May uh, gives you kind of a faint nod, even though you're not really paying attention to her. Rain bladders off the roof of the car on the sidewalk. She turns back inside uh, to look uh, over at Sifu to Swanli. Uh, Sifu, what is uh, what are you up to? Um, at the moment, I am simply waiting tables, as that is part of my undercover. Beautiful. So you have like a you have like the waiter's uniform going I on. Basically, have what I have on, as it works for that as well. <laughs> cool. So let's play that out. You are standing uh, at a table uh, with a towel over your arm, and the diner is. Um, I'm sorry. Can we get another serving of those uh, the noodles with the thing? They were so good. Absolutely. Would that be one or two? Are you both having some? We're we're both get we're. If we could just please both of us. Um, and would you like some tea, perhaps, to wash course, it down? Yes, we want tea. The woman's getting a little bit impatient with you. What do you look like? What is, uh, who, who's cast as uh, Sifu? Uh, I was originally going Tony Ja, but now I'm thinking Jet Li. Okay, Jet Li. So, of... <laughs> <laughs> Michael as Jet Li as Sifu to Swan Lee. Yeah. Uh, yes, we want tea. Thank you. What kind of a restaurant is this, honestly? Thank you. And I head to the back and get uh, the order. Meanwhile, taking a look at everyone else around and just seeing, making sure everyone looks like they're doing what they should be doing. Cool. Um, you pass Justin's character. Uh, who is Justin? Philip B.B. Castle is uh, off to one side, and you guys share a knowing look with each other. Um, Justin, who does Sifu Tuswanli see when he looks your way? Uh, well, he sees a man sitting in a booth pretending to be a customer or being a customer and uh, the man sipping a coffee and uh, reading a newspaper. And uh, luckily, the newspaper is right side up because the man can't see a thing. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. And what do you look like? Who's, who have you cast to be BB? I've cast Sidney Poitier to be BB. Lovely. And are you rocking an afro? I'm not rocking an afro. Okay, cool. No. <laughs> um, so you and Sifu uh, share looks. I mean, he's looking at you. You're kind mm. of looking in his general direction, I guess. Well, I can tell. Sifu has a very, very silent walk. I just sense a presence. And I nod right at him. Wonderful. Um, so... Your colleague, May Ong, is kind of surveying the interior of the dining room. She's, as I said, near the hostess station, kind of behind a plant. Um, she looks back out the window to Jack. He's still talking with those Chinese dudes outside. And so she looks to try to find where Kim Liu has put himself in the situation. Alex, where's Kim Liu Han? <clears throat> Kim Liu Han is seated at a table of four but only on his own and is sitting in a chair with his legs crossed up underneath him and he's eating a big bowl of noodles and just you know with a pair of chopsticks 
shoveling it into his mouth. <laughs> and he's looking around. And he's, you know, keeping an eye on things. He's also looking at all the other people. And whenever somebody catches his eye, he politely smiles and bobs his head and continues to fill his face with these noodles. Wonderful. What do you look like? Who have you cast? The famous Bruce Lee is Perfect. my character. <laughs> okay, lovely. Uh, and what are you wearing? Um, sort of similar what um, what um, uh, Sifu Swan Lee is is wearing, but mine is more of a uh, a country, a more relaxed uh, something, not as formal. Uh, I am a country boy from China, in the, in outside of Hong Kong. So this is uh, very much normal to me to be eating a big bowl of, of rice noodles beautiful okay let's cut back up to uh harlan really quickly uh so jack has been talking with these dudes <laughs> and so, that's sarah uh, chalmers she's this she's riding this donkey comes in through water polo and this guy we called skid mark or should we say you picking up any of this uh <laughs> skid any... mark is that a the miss uh, translation does that mean in no, your no, no 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 this is what we used to call him in high school he had this big look, look it doesn't really matter i'm out of this do you have another cigarette i could borrow oh uh, no nah, man sorry that was my last one all right that's fine i probably got to get back in the car anyway you guys take all it right. easy nice meeting you jack you're a good guy you too dong and i start heading through the rain over to the uh to the car again and i get into the side seat and shut the door oh man it's pouring out it is uh, okay folks this is a security mission you guys are here with the golden candle company and you're supposed to be protecting dr lorraine kwan um so let's us roll some uh rolls i want to take a look the at the rearview mirror i want to bend it a little bit to see the front door of the uh, restaurant keeping an eye to see if anybody enters that looks suspicious Totally. Uh, right now, there's no one going in or out. I think mostly because the weather has been so shitty that people inside are kind of staying inside. I rolled any sh shitty anyway, and it was negative three to the. <laughs> right. So uh, I, I will see. Anyone... I forget to take off my sunglasses. <laughs> yeah, it's getting dark out, and you're you just want to look super cool. Well, I mean... uh, anyone who's inside the restaurant, you can make a police, detective, or guns <sighs> check. Uh, I'm going to do I... a detective check. Yeah. See if I or here. Any conversations that sound out of place. That's amazing. Okay. Do, 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 do. Oop, and then a red. Sorry. There we go. So I got a minus one, so I got a 11 detective. Hey, that's not bad. Anyone else rolling as well? Yep, I'd like to. Yeah, this is to try to see what's going on in your surroundings, if there's anything amiss, and specifically if there's anyone packing heat. So a three and a three, so no. Only seafood Nothing and there. his guns. And my <laughs> detective score would be an unskilled check of seven, I see. Yes, correct. All so, right. so, so far we have a seven and an <clears throat> 11, I believe, for BB. Yeah, that's right. Okay, um, you know what? And an eight. And an eight, okay. Uh, so both Sifu and Kim Liu uh, cast your eyes around the room. And you notice a couple things that make your heart start to beat a little faster. Uh, first, you notice there are too many eyes on you. Patrons who were moments ago enjoying bowls of noodles, steam wreathing their heads, are now staring coldly in your direction. You catch sight of the flash of gunmetal as someone removes their hand from underneath a tablecloth. And now, before I will allow you to act, I will tell BB. Your experience as a blind man moving through the world has taught you to rely on other senses besides That's your right. eyesight. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You, you didn't realize its significance at first, maybe because of the din from the dining room was covering, but uh, the record spitting at the hostess station, covering, covering the background noise. But now you understand the background clatter from dishes and pans in the kitchen is gone, and the room beyond the beaded curtain is silent. At that moment, I'd like to drop one of my chopsticks so that it hits the edge of my bowl in slow motion and then falls onto the ground, allowing me to bend over and get it. And also subconsciously acknowledging to, to uh, BB that something ain't right. Cool. So you drop a chopstick. Oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? 
Uh, BB, I will say just I'll carry over that same. I think it was detectives check that you used. Mm -hmm. Um, that you do hear this chopstick drop from the place where you know your friend Kim to be sitting. All right, and <laughs> I get ready as best I can for shit to go down. Do I smell gunpowder? I don't know. Do you? I think I do. <laughs> well, a little gunpowder on the air. <laughs> Meanwhile, Jack cracks a beer and turns on some Roy Orbison on the radio. <laughs> Pretty woman. <laughs> and he just right. leans back with his already sunglasses and takes a nap. <laughs> so I, I thought then I stand up. Where is Lorraine sitting? Uh, she's maybe, I don't know. You probably wouldn't let her get too far away from you. Two tables away? <clears throat> Two tables away. And I stand up. I move over to sit next to her. Because As... I memorized the layout. I will say, as you stand up, I'm going to make an attack roll as one of these mooks pulls out a gun and fires. Oh. Uh, and you know what? The, the man stands from the table, pushes himself back, pulls a gun out, aims it directly at the woman that you were supposed to be detecting, pulls the trigger, and Dr. Loring Kwan's head bursts into a shower of blood and brains. And I sit down next to her and I say, okay, Lorraine, shit. As the head explodes. I would have heard that. Ventilating action. Commanding combat sequences. Stream. My name is always Mr. Harlan Guthrie, and I am here with my very clever brother, Mr. Alex Guthrie. Oh, hello! <laughs> my very best friend, Mr. Michael Barber. <laughs> Mr. Justin Thomas James. <laughs> and of course, the one, the only, Miss Joe Fallick, our GM for the evening. Hello. Ladies and gentlemen, we are so happy to be here with you for the first time, bringing you a little bit of fun. That's right. Tonight is going to be an action-packed night of non-stop comedic movie-type action, uh, hosted by, or directed, I should say, by the very uh, fantastic Joe. Um, but uh, but welcome. Thank you all for being with us here tonight. This is a big. Very excited to be here. Thanks for joining us. Uh, as always, this is an 18 plus show. If you don't feel comfortable with the no no words and the violent, terribly grotesque things that you'll probably see as we describe killing a bunch of mooks, uh, then you go ahead and you close the video. But before you do, you make sure you like it. There's a little thumbs up image at the bottom of the YouTube video. You make sure to give that one a big old sexy thumbs up for your old pal Harlan, aka Jack Green, because it's going to make him really happy. And of course, Alex with his 18 plus viewer warning is going to remind us that uh, those that's who right still see little kids things. turn it off or tell your parents to come into the room and they'll turn it off for you or tell you can watch or turn it up do whatever you want to do um turn that is, shit up turn that shit up <laughs> oh. i wish i wish we could have copywritten music because totally pretty woman could have gone down in the right. middle of like that slow motion chopstick ball and the minute of the guy pulled it we'll just have to do lame rip-offs we'll call it Pretty handsome lady. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, so yes, it is, of course, 18 plus. If you are um, new to us, then uh, where have you been? Join the Discord chat. The link should be in the description. Uh, make sure you follow us on Twitter and all that fantastic jazz. But most importantly, join the Facebook group. The Facebook group is where all the cool people get together and hang out and, and smoke doobies and talk about cool music and stuff like that. Uh, the doobies is a thing, right? And uh, when you join the Facebook group, you also enter into a neat little clique where we're better than everybody else. No, but we chat mm. and we, we get to hang out and it's, it's a lot of fun. So please join the Facebook group. The link again is in the description or you can just find it by searching the Invictus Stream on Facebook. There's a page in a group, there is a difference. When you join the group, you get to 
participate in the conversation, but it also means you get to throw your hat into the ring of winning most valuable post. What is most valuable post, Justin? Ooh, well, most valuable post is going to be by one, none other than John C. Desi. Woohoo! John C. Yeah! Desi. Wow, I just can't explain what it is, but that's totally fine too. Well done, John. <laughs> you win uh, for your po fantastic post about your favorite lines. You're asking what your favorite quote was from our RPG systems. It was very fun, fantastic job. So you win the most valuable post. And as Justin very quickly went over, the most valuable post is the post of the week that we found just the most interesting, the most clever, the most creative, the most fun. So well done, John. You earned it. Um... That is uh, all the important stuff. Finally, I want to mention that this is, of course, something that we are very uh, strongly uh, feeling towards. <laughs> what? Uh, the Extra Life is Passion. an organization that we work with. <laughs> no, it's, the, it's an organization that uh, that works with the Children's Miracle Network of Hospitals, uh, and it is a very very important cause to us, and it is something that uh, if you have the time and the money, please follow the link in the description and donate what you can to uh, Extra Life. It is something that on November 4th, we're going to be 24 hours streaming. I'm going to be doing a bunch of video games. We have the Hot Ones Challenge. we got a lot of other fun, really cool stuff happening. So uh, if that's something you want to see, please donate. The link is in the description, and it will make me and Alex particularly feel very special. Won't it, Alex? He's muted, so he can't he can't agree with me. But in spirit, I'm sure he would. <laughs> Joe agrees with me, right, Joe? I totally agree. It's yeah. such a worthy cause. Uh, really if is. you have a little bit of extra change kicking around, it's a really great way to uh, to give back to your community. That's right. And community is what it's all about. That's right. You community out there in Discord land, how are you? Doing? <laughs> That's right. Lots of messages, so uh, be sure to uh, be sure to comment along. Lots of hilarious stuff. So. <laughs> That was delayed. Uh, tonight's going to be a lot of wacky, fun uh, movie s. So please go ahead and, uh, and join the Discord chat and chat along. That is it for me. Joe has tirelessly worked at crafting us a masterful campaign starting mm. with tonight. So without further ado, I'm going to throw it back to the one and only Joe to take us on this wild and crazy ride. Joe, kick it old school. Thanks. Thank you, Helen. Uh, so as we left our heroes, uh, little bits of Dr. Lorraine Kwan probably just splattered all over <laughs> Philip. <laughs> I crushed my beer can and I opened the car door. That's you much hear, on my turn. You hear the, uh, the gunshot from inside. Actually, everyone's just going to have to roll initiative for me, please. This is the top of battle, our very first fight. In oh my god, I'm so excited. Um, this is a really fun mechanic for everyone who's new to the system. It's a rolling initiative, so Oops. hopefully things keep fast-paced. I'll do the first one. It's 6 and 6. I'm 12. Great. Oh, it is 2. I forgot. <laughs> uh, no, initiative No, it's is 1. I just took the first one. one. I messed yeah. it up. Oh, so I'm a uh, You roll four and your eight. speed. So I'm 12. 12. Wonderful. We have Harlan and Justin acting on the same shot. Yeah, baby. So I've rolled a 4. What are we adding it to? Your speed, speed, buddy. Oh, right, right. Four and seven, so that's uh, four, 11. Because I'm outside, can I go first, uh, BB? Uh, Michael? I have a nine total. Wonderful. <clears throat> All right. Okay. So He's first nine. shot, the sequence is 12. That is Harlan and Justin. Movement-wise, does it cost me too much to get in? Um, I would say anything that you can do within about 30 seconds is probably... The horrible. way Jack Green runs, he got there in 12. <laughs> and he kicks open the door of the restaurant, pulls off his sunglasses, goes, what the fuck's going on in here? As he sees... It's a scene of chaos. Just the blood, the halo of blood around the booth. And he puts his sunglasses back on <laughs> and shuts the doors to the restaurant. Oh, no, you do? Yeah, BB, your turn. All right. So the head of Lorraine explodes right next to me just as I'm sitting into the booth. And I can tell exactly where the gunshot came from. And it's only about a meter or so away from me. So I stand up right away and I reach for the guy's arm so that he can't shoot again. Okay. So I'm going to call that an unarmed attack, maybe. All right. Like martial arts? Yeah. Let's do that. And if you succeed, you can like twist his arm around his back. I kind of want to. Throw him through the window, but uh, we'll see what happens. Okay. So. Okay. <laughs> we'll see what happens tonight. We'll see. Oh, I got a failure and Negative it explodes. Three. Oh, no. So then uh, six and a three plus 
A one. Okay, so I got a minus four to a 12, so eight. Eight, yeah. You reach for the gun and you totally miss and it, it leaves you off balance and you kind of, you you like hit the dining table with you with your hand uh, and just kind of make a loud noise. <laughs> Bam! <laughs> and it sounds like a gunshot. <laughs> you get Not freaked even. out because of it. Huh. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to count 12, that as an attack, I? probably, right? Who's? Uh, Justin's. Yeah. So that brings you down to shot nine. Harlan, I gave you a one shot penalty for your action. Uh, okay. Sorry, for your, your movement. I'll take it. So it's, uh, it's Alex and Harlan. Sorry, I need to refer to you. Kim and Jack. Kim. It's, it's Kim and Jack uh, on this, uh, shot 11. It's on the screen, Joe. Sorry. So myself first? Kim, you can go first, yeah. yeah. Okay, great. So as I as I see this happen immediately unfold, my initial instinct is to grab the hot bowl of noodles in front of me and fling it across the room. Fucking right you do. Okay, do you well, have a- Well, now that makes my move sound terrible, which I was totally gonna do, so I'm carrying them anyway. Ah, <laughs> we can both do it. Amazing. <laughs> um, great, Make. do you have oh. any kind of ranged weapons? Um, no, I do not. Okay, I've we'll just call it martial arts. Set art. a nunchuck. No, that's not it. No. So, three my, plus my martial art 15 is an 18. Yeah, that's wonderful. Um, so, you clock the guy uh, with a bowl of soup <laughs> and put him down. What does that look like? Well, I'm picturing this, like, bowl of, of noodles, <laughs> like, flying across the room and almost like Evil Dead style as it follows the bowl right across as the noodles are kind of bouncing around and barely staying in. But they do. Mm -hmm. They stay in and it's sloshing. And it hits the guy that's holding the gun right square in the eyes. And he's like, ah, ah. It's like yes. And the bowl of noodles head. lands on his head. And he, you know, sorry, he's got noodle head. Oh God. <laughs> so he, <laughs> he falls out of his chair. This noodle headed man falls out of his chair, clonks the back of his head on the floor, and he's down for the count. A little bit of blood leaks out. Um, All right. So you off the man with some noodles. How do you feel about that? <laughs> And as I do that, I immediately, like in one swift motion, go from cross leg sitting in a two chair to standing. And that was all in one motion and flinging the bowl was all at once. So now I'm standing there like this. Gorgeous. Okay, so I'm bringing you down to shot eight. Uh, Jack, so you I want to peek up through the of... window uh, outside the restaurant and just see, are there any bad guys uh, near the entrance? Um, interesting you should ask. Why don't you roll, you don't have police, so roll a police check with your unskilled seven. Will do, and I got a zero, so seven. Okay, um, you don't notice anyone, however, I will say that it's pretty clear that May is not jumping into action. Interesting, our buddy boy. Yeah, she's hmm. just standing there. Oh yeah, she's a girl. Hmm. Well, I never saw, a I never saw gender. I just saw her as a good worker. <laughs> Do I have a radio in the car or anything like that? Would could I could I could call it's, her out? It's a '60s. I don't um, know if that does that. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> they had radios in the '60s. Sure. No, barely. Like, no. I mean, not it's, really. it's not well, for like a high tech security detail. I don't know. For communicating. Okay, okay fuck it. I'm gonna roll in through the door. I'm gonna pull my boot knife out of my pocket and I'm gonna be like, yeah. all right, Jack, you got this. You could do this, take this down, you got this. And I roll, I do like a roll into the to the door, but I forget that it opens in or it opens out and I just go mm -hmm. boom. Ah! Ah! Oh no, Jack. God damn it. And I just kind of open it and slink in the back. Ah. God damn it. That's beautiful. Do you want to try to make an attack still? I do, yeah. So I'm gonna go up to, uh, I don't know if I suspect May just yet, but the fact she's not moving makes me a little nervous. I mean, she hasn't necessarily come to her point in the initiative either. That's but. true. So, you know, I know that initiative exists in this world. That's therefore, right. I'm just going to, but there's no bad guys near me. They're, they're all attacking. Uh, I mean, you didn't roll a police check on the room. Right. The only people who know kind of who's who um, in terms of beady eyes staring at you over bowls of soup and drawing guns are... Uh, Kim and Sifu. All right, I. Uh, well, you I, can take a second to cast around the room if you like. I might have to, yeah, because I don't want to grab an old lady. Although it would be hilarious. It was my initial instinct to be like, I'll just grab the nearest table. Oh, negative three. Fuck. Jack doesn't see shit with his goddamn sunglasses on. <laughs> yeah. Um. 
You see uh, Kim throw a bowl of soup at somebody who falls over. Kim, finish your goddamn meal. Okay, I run over the guy. Well, he's dead, I guess, already. So I'm like... Well, I mean, Kim may choose to have dealt non-lethal damage, but that's neither here nor there at this point. No, I wouldn't have. Can I respond? You certainly can. Oh, there! What? Look! What? Get that man next to you! He's got a gun! Uh, all right. And I swipe I believe it's man. in his pants. I just swipe And he does. Man. Yeah. Okay, make an attack roll. Happily. Uh, with a... Plus five gives me a plus uh, eight, uh, 18, so I kill him. Well, Marvelous, yeah. So I, I, without even fight. looking, I, I just run my knife over and it just slits his throat open and starts spewing blood all over me. Ah, oh God, no, Jesus Christ, <laughs> Kim, Kim, I just killed a guy. The body actually slumps forward and oh. lands on you oh, for a moment. Jesus, and I push him off. <laughs> does he have a gun on him, by the way? He does, he drops the gun to the floor. As my final action, I take it. Great. Okay, so that's going to bump you down to shot eight. Happily. Uh, May is the next person who moves. Um, she is going to take a second to draw two wide blades from holsters on her thighs. Uh, and she's going to try to get you in the back with those, Harlan. What the fuck? That's right. That's right. She's going to try to fuck with you. I'm oh. going to see her walking up and be like, May, 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 May. Uh, does the 12 hit you? Uh, with a defensive 15, it does not. Okay, Can so... Can I talk her down for the reason of that she didn't hit me? You see one of, uh, like a, a big fucking knife fly past your head, uh, and as it lands in the wall, you recognize that knife. That's May's knife. What the May? fuck are you doing? I can't. It's really deep. May, what the fuck? And she snarls at you. Uh, May, you really threw this thing in? Uh, okay, I'm not going to try. And she, she takes a couple of uh, steps back behind the plant to gain a little bit of cover. And I said, baby, it's me! <laughs> no shit! Can't you see her? Not a... What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> shit. Now, my guy, the guy that um, Kim threw a bowl at, that wasn't my guy, right? Uh, that was the guy. guy that shot uh, Dr. Kwan. So Dr. that was... Kwan. The, yes. Oh, okay. That, that was the guy who you were uh, aiming for initially, I guess. Perfect. Okay, that's all I wanted to know. Um, but as this is happening, and it is the mook's shot, though the PCs get to act on this shot, I will say that about 12 men and women uh, who are all disguised to look like they come from all walks of life kind of stand up with business like a plum from the table and start pulling it. One guy's got an axe. Like, who brings the axe to a restaurant? <laughs> uh, <laughs> one Tight guy's security. got like a baseball bat with some nails in it or something. Yeah, they mean business. Yo, BB, you know, ask you that guy a question, will you? What do you? What kind of question are you talking about? He's got an axe. It's a pun, and I'm still trying to get the sword out. How the hell am I supposed to know he's got an axe? Well, that's why I explained <laughs> it afterwards. Oh my god. <laughs> Uh, so on shot nine, we have um, Bibi and then Sifu and then the mooks. Perfect. So I stand on the the booth table and I leap across over to my other booth, just getting out of the way of gunfire that I know is going to come. And I start reaching under the table for my guitar case. Great. Now, a leap like that, is that going to cost a shot? No, no. Um, no. I do want to know, like, how elaborate, I, I mean, I assume because you've been traveling with this guitar since, mm -hmm. I don't know when, the last 10 years, you can probably open it in your sleep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I'll say you can jump over, get your case out, pull out your guitar, and do whatever you want with it. That's right. I had the clasps already open. Mm -hmm. So I whip the, the case open, I grab Agnes, the beautiful Fender, out of her case, and just... Slowly, in a moment of serenity, I run my hand across her front. I say, shh, shh, it's all right, baby. It's all right. Let's put some baddies down. And I fire at the closest <laughs> man who I can hear standing up out of his seat. Amazing. Are you just going to try to shoot one dude or what? You know what? I'm just going to do a pump a full round 
into okay. as many as I can sense around <laughs> me. I can smell what the people have been eating, you see. Yeah, totally. Right? So I know all the mouths turn towards you. Yeah, Kung Pao <laughs> chicken, um, General Tao, and uh, chicken fingers. All right. So choose how many mooks you want to try to put down and then make your roll. And if you like, I would suggest using a fortune dice. Uh, that is a good idea. So I'm going to target one of them as my quarry. Mm -hmm. uh, General Tao is my Great. quarry. <laughs> and um, I'm going to do, uh, he does, I do plus two, de uh, or plus two attack, mm -hmm. and then a plus three to damage, maybe. So plus two to attack on this one. I'm going to use a fortune die as well. Mm -hmm. Great. And just shooting the one guy? No, I'm shooting all three. Try okay, so there's two dudes behind him. Maybe ah. maybe your bullet will go through and hit all three. So Agnes, the special thing about Agnes, my guitar, it's not just any regular guitar. There is a shotgun that I spent a, saved a lot of money for uh, built into the body of it. So as soon as I strum a G7 flat nine sharp 13 chord, that is going to shoot the shotgun. So I'm <laughs> going to do that, <laughs> strum that chord, and... Let's see where my shot goes. Two success. Don't hit me, Bro. don't hit me, don't hit me. Oh, fucker. So. That's good. That's I rolled a 10 and a 6 on the red, so I got to roll that red again. That's right. Oh. Come on. Okay, so a 9. So, to attack, I got a 13 yeah. plus 1. Yes. And then plus 2 against my quarry. Wow. Okay. So you rolled a four. Wait. Thirteen plus one plus two. Plus two for my crosshairs. Wonderful. Uh, so sixteen, six. and you were trying to hit three dudes, so that hits exactly. Uh, what Excellent. does it look like when you take down three mooks? Well, you know, uh, it looks like a shotgun blast um, right to the chest, and. Oh the chest opens up completely and it's such a powerful blast that the man flies backwards and hits the other guy which hits the other guy and they all go, <laughs> go scrolling backwards and fall down some steps and break their necks wonderful okay so uh there's three dead bodies in the basement of this restaurant thank you very much bb um You're i'm gonna put you down to shot six uh sifu to swan lee what do you do well i take a quick Visual, I'm going to attack the three nearest guys. Yeah, let's see that happen. And I will use a fortune dice for that. Great. So I do two greens and one red. That's correct. Uh, do, do, do. Ooh, so nice. I have, that looks like seven plus five, 15. So that sounds a lot like, I don't know, 25? Uh, Min so minus one for each guy, right? Yeah, that's right. Okay. So. And you're trying to hit 13. So I feel good. I feel good about that. Yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> uh, do you have a demonstration? Uh, absolutely. So I'm walking <laughs> in with my towel and some tea for the table as all this goes down. Got a and it was tea totally, cup. <laughs> it was totally those motherfuckers that were giving you trouble about the tea. Right. Uh, so seeing everything happen, I throw the tea into the face of one of the guys as another one is reaching for his gun. And I take this, wrap it around, throw him down, kick the next guy. <laughs> <laughs> Laying weight. So the guy flips, crashing into the table. The table breaks. The other person's like, ah. <laughs> Covered in chow mein. And the, and the one guy kicks through the window. Just so dead. Beautiful. OK. The bodies are piling up in here, and the wait staff, uh, the people who are legitimately supposed to be in this restaurant, are starting to make for the exits. They're cowering, etc. Um, Michael, that puts you down to shot six, and now it is the enemy's turn. So, uh, one dude comes out of the kitchen. The he like swipes the beaded curtain aside just in time to see Michael put these dudes down. Sorry, uh, Sifu put these dudes down, and he kind of looks at you for a second, and then he pulls out a big fucking gun, um, and he's gonna try to hit you with that gun. Um, do, 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 does a sixteen hit your defense? <laughs> 
Oh, so he does. Um, that's going to deal to oh! 10 wound points to you, uh, <laughs> minus your toughness. Um, uh, okay, well, that sounds like three. Yeah, so that's not too bad. Uh, so he's got this big gun in one hand, uh, probably like a sawed-off shotgun type deal, and he, uh, he hammers you with it. And then he looks around the restaurant to see who else is standing and takes a couple of steps towards you, Sifu. Um, while that's happening, uh, two dudes uh, who are sitting nearby where Kim Lu was uh, stand up and take aggressive posturing at him. They have empty hands, but they are ready to rumble. And... Does a 7 or an 11 hit you, Kim Lu? A 7 or 11? No, if my defense is 15. That's right. So they uh, flail at you ineffectively. Um, are you dodging them, or are you kind of smacking oh, their out of the way? I'm totally <laughs> dodging. It's just like, it's the most calm dodging ever. I'm like this. Is Beautiful. That... There's two of them, one on either side, and they're trying to flank you, and it's just not. Um, Joe... Yeah. John Regan has asked to spend an XP for an environmental change to make a grease fire start in the kitchen. From the oh, yeah. I love it! <laughs> nice. So that's up. Excellent, John. Thank you so much, Good John. Use, John. <laughs> Atmospheric um, So everyone with a nose to spare uh, starts to smell this foul, greasy, smoky odor um, mm. coming from the kitchen, and then all of a sudden black smoke starts to pour out of the kitchen um, through the like beaded curtain that this big tall man just walked out of. Um, so the remaining mooks who have not yet acted are going to react to that fact. Uh, not very many people like burning to death. So uh, one of them is going to try to take a swing at Jack with his ax as he runs out the door. What? And I'm like, yes. I'm like kneeling down on the ground too. Like I'm like kind of against it. So it's like perfect does, head chopping height. Does a nine <laughs> hit you, Jack? No, not with a fifteen. So at the last minute, I just and my hat gets stuck into the wall. And I'm like, oh dang. <laughs> okay, and then uh, and he races outside. And now there's the knife and the fucking hat both stuck in the wall, and I'm both trying to pull both through. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. Fuck it. Um. So I'm gonna say that one guy ran away. Thank you again, John. Um. And what else? So I will say, BB, uh, mm. you are probably the other prime target considering that you just fucking blew through two men, uh, sorry, three men with a shotgun blast. Um, so three guys are going to come up to you. Uh, one of them has a machete and the other two are kind of menacing you like Kung Fu styles. Mm. Uh, I can't see any of it. I'm yeah. Not that they're doing. Oh. I know they're there, but I don't know what... I don't, I'm not intimidated at all. Uh, 12, uh, a 12, 3, and a 22 to hit you. Oh, the 22 definitely hits. The other two do not. Okay, so the guy with the machete takes a swing at your arm, and he uh, hacks hacks your arm a little bit. Um, what is your defense? Uh, my defense is uh, 14, but my toughness is 7. Uh, so your want. defense is 14, you said? That's yes. eight plus the machete uh, is nine. So that's 17 damage minus your toughness. All right. So that's 10 points of damage. That's 10 wound points. Ooh, correct. Ooh, that's a tough one. Um, and the other guys, uh, I'm not sure how you're dodging these. Maybe they're landing hits and they just don't phase you. Like uh, you, it got my too... hat. Didn't you hear that? <laughs> just maybe... I'm thinking like you're too beefy, maybe. Like they are landing punches, but if they just don't, you're like, what the fuck is this? Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, yeah, exactly. Because you're you not going to be dodging necessarily. Not at this point. No, yeah. I'm I'm kind of bracing myself against the blows, I guess. Luckily. Wonderful. Okay, and with that, uh, we are to Alex and Harlan. I'm sorry, Kim Lou and Jack Green. Ah, Kimmy, you want to go first? Are you asking me? Too late. I, I turn around and go to pull my hat out of the wall. And like half through pulling, I'm like, ah, fuck it. And I turn around and I pull the gun out and I'm like, all right. And I just start firing at uh, the nearest mook. Actually, how many are left? 
Okay, so the axe guy ran outside. Uh, you have May, who just tried to cleave you with one of her throwing knives. Oh, right, uh, that bitch. No, she's there's, a, then. there's a big dude with a gun menacing uh, Sifu. There are three guys hanging around Philip. And how many of them attacked you, Kim Lu? Did you kill all the guys around you? I think you did. Uh, no. Did I kill them? No. They were they were swiping at me and missing. Yeah, there's two guys at Kim. Yeah. So right now we have uh, May, the big dude. There's five mooks inside and one guy outside. Okay. So can I go at May? Yeah. So yeah, I, I stand up. I pull, try to pull my fucking hat. I see her sword, and they're both stuck in the wall. And I just turn my stuff down. I'm like, all oh, right. May goo guy pan, you fuck. Did you do this? Was this all you? <laughs> She's like, dead. I'm kind sorry, of walking it's over. not all me, but yes, I'm responsible. You know, I thought we had something. You and me, we were talking. We were really cool. I kind of thought you were hot, but you know what? Not anymore. Let's go. And I go at her with my boot knife. Oh, yeah? You want to go? Well, not, not when shot. you say it like that. That makes it. Now you're goading me. If you just stand there, <laughs> I'll walk towards you, and then you do what you're going to do. And yeah, actually, you know what? This isn't going to. And I run at her. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm going to try to attack her. I'm going to use That's Fortune great. Die, too, by the way. Yeah, please. Oh, I actually rolled one. So let me clear that and roll additional. So I rolled a one and a four. So five. So three plus three. That's 16 to hit. You do. You hit her. Uh, so you hit her with three additional. So we're going to add that to whatever damage the knife gives. Which is eight, I believe. So Great. That brings so you answer. deal 11 hit points to her. Yeah. And Wonderful. I kind of go up like across her belly from, from... And I nick her chin as well. Just sort of cuts through the bottom of her chin. Revealing she like her gum. wipes it and like licks the blood off of her hand. And she's like... I don't know why, but I find that really hot. I'll see your insides, Jack. You're just turning me on more. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so that was your attack, Harlan. Uh, uh, Jack, Kim. Jack, that was Kim. Jack's attack. Jack's attack. Nicely done. Kim Liu, what do you do? <laughs> ah! I can do it. I can make a ride. It's like a Dr. Seuss book. <laughs> we can do this all night. <laughs> okay, so Kim Liu. Being the martial artist that he is. There are is. two men who are just like attacking yeah. you and your dog. So daughter. they keep on swiping. Now, have you ever seen someone perform on one of those? Um, they're called a horse in gymnastics, you know? And they yeah. go on their hands and they spin oh, yeah. their legs up and around. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I do that on the table in front of me. And I'm like, I go up on my two hands and I start whipping around and my legs are just going wild, right? So I'm going to try and kick both of these guys in the face simultaneously one after the other yeah okay okay so negative one on my martial arts which is a 15 so 14 that still hits all right yeah. so i'm just kind of spinning and it's like thwap 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 to each of the guys in the face. <laughs> Great. uh and they both kind of take like one or two kicks to the face and then blah, go down uh, wow. great. Keeping my composure. I'm like not sweating. I don't smile. I don't breathe heavily. It's just through my mm -hmm. nose. Don't breathe. <laughs> um, okay, it's May's turn. Uh, she's right up, like nose to nose with um, <sighs> Jack. All right. Almost. And she's got her other throwing knife in her hand. And she's, you guys just get a straight up knife fight. She's yeah. like, ha, ha, ha. It's like trying to fucking <laughs> get you. Yeah, you're managing to deflect some of her blows. You're, like, jumping back from a couple of them. Um, and then she kind of winds up for a big hit. Um, does a 13 hit you? No. Okay, so... So as she strikes with a knife, I bring mine up, and they just kind of connect. And I'm like, mm, lick your wound again, because that did something for me, and I don't know why. Shut up, you. Ugh, and you I just, I just kind of lean closer. <laughs> she just pushes you back all right then you die all right uh okay so we have sifu and bb all right uh so bb actually calls for sifu he sees sifu i could use a hand up here as he shoots another round just trying to get the shotgun between 
the two of the guys, at least one of the guys has to be the one with the machete. Because mm -hmm. I don't there's, like him. There's three of them. You got two throwing punches and one with the knife. Yeah. I'm going to try really hard to take out the one with the knife. So All I'm right. going to make him my quarry. And, uh, can you do that in the middle of combat? Just like because the other guy died, you can just choose a new guy. I think because the other guy died, I can. Great. Let's um, do it. All right. So, uh, boom, 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 ba doom, ba doom. Ooh. So that's a tie. So that is 13 mm -hmm. plus zero plus two for the guy, for the guy with the machete. Yes. Yeah, so you hit him. You hit him square in the chest with your gun. And the other guy I hit as well? Uh, you did not state that you were trying to aim for more than oh, one. Oh, I was. Dude. I did. I was trying to get it between the two of did them. You, oh, I didn't understand that. Yeah, so you, you shoot two men at once. This is becoming a thing for you. <laughs> this is a thing for me. This has always been my shtick, you know? Shoot as many people with one shot as you can. That's efficiency. You're an economical gentleman. That is correct. So I fire, and one of them just splatters against the wall and the other one the guy with the machete actually oh he spins around wildly and the guy who was pinned to the wall his machete comes around yes comes his neck you chop his block off so okay blood everywhere. It's beautiful yeah, everywhere um and i wipe my suit of the blood flex yeah you do all right sifu so i've got the uh, gentleman with the shotgun right at me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He took a couple steps towards you, menacing you. And then I kick the nearest chair into the gun, so he kind of reels back. Ooh. As it comes forward, like as he recovers from it, mm -hmm. and I grab it, pull him forward, wrap around the gun, kick him in the head. Okay. <laughs> Let's see if that, that happens. Happen with dice. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly what's going to happen. I, I love that what you're doing gonna get your, shot in the bum hole. The, what punk. you're doing with your body is so much more impressive than like <laughs> clicking a button online, but we're still like, show us the dice. Okay, so it's uh even. So I got <laughs> That's so true. What'd you get? I got a three negative, a three positive, and so a fifteen. Beautiful. Um yeah, this guy's defense is not fifteen, so you hit him. Um Unfortunately, your outcome was not sufficient. I really wanted you to disarm him with that chair, but he manages to hang on to that shotgun. Um, you do kick him in the face, so that was 15. Uh, and what's your martial arts damage? Uh, it would be seven. Great. So, the big, I'm just gonna call him big boy. Big boy, hey big boy. <laughs> the big boy takes nine damage. All right. Um, so as you can tell, uh, May and this shotgun man, who uh, the camera in the audience knows is the same dude that took out the man in the alleyway at the introduction. I recognize um, him. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they are people who actually have hit points. Um, moving right along, it is all of the bad guys' turns at once. So we'll start with Big Boy again. Uh, he reels back after you clock him in the face with your foot, uh, and he wipes a little bit of blood away from his mouth, and he says, You mar my beautiful visage. How could you? And uh, he tries to shoot you again. Oh, he does a good job, too. He's a good, good shooting boy. Um, 17? Does 17 hit your defense? Hey, Michael. He's muted. Sorry. Yes. Yes, it does. By how much? Uh, by three. Okay. Um, and so 13, 13 damage. All right. Minus wow. your toughness. All right. So you guys see that your friend Sifu has taken two hits to his body with a firearm. Uh, okay. Now we have Ow. we have one man uh, around Philip who is still trying with his fists to land a decent hit. Does a ten hit you, BB? A ten does not hit me. All right, so he uh, he lands an ineffective punch oh. on your shoulder, and it kind of glances off. <laughs> so it now does, and as it glances off, it hits my guitar kind of oh. and slightly detunes it. <gasps> and I say, it's "You good. jive, motherfucker." <laughs> 
And now you know exactly where he's standing, too, which is great. Exactly. Um, <laughs> and what else? Kim took care of the dudes around him. May? May acts on her own initiative count. Oh, okay. So it is... Um, do, do. This is fun. Hey, guys. Yeah! <laughs> wow. We're almost done. Uh, so we are working on Kim Lu and Jack. Um, you, yeah, there's a big dude, there's May, and there's one guy hanging out with BB. All right, I got May. So I'm still, I'm still, you okay if I go first, Kim? Because you're muted and you're not really paying attention. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so I'm still, I'm still out with May. I can't remember the last thing she said. Oh, yeah, I kind of tried to just give her a little, and then she reeled back. I was like, all right, all right, okay. You know what? Look, that's fine. I thought we had something. It felt like a connection, but I understand how it is, okay? American you may boys. be cute, Jack, but I would never date an American. Okay, she's hold still on. taking. Hold on, at hold you. on, BB, and I shut across the room. Did you hear that? She I said heard. I may be cute. Oh, oh! I and thought she was talking about the Americans part. She oh. tries to stick you with a knife. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna stick her with a knife. Yeah, you try. <laughs> and, uh, so I go up to her, I kind of dodge a little bit, and I go across her across her face. <laughs> Which would yeah. really, really suck, by the way. That hurt a lot. A knife in the face would just be the most embarrassing thing ever. Five. Oh, shit. And five and six. Negative one brings me down to 12 to hit. No, you miss her. An explosive six. Oh, shit. Oh. You're right. Did you roll a six? Yes, I haven't been did. watching. I cleared it too. Was it a negative six? Yeah, there's a negative shit. six. Let's do that again. Hold on. And so, for the audience, he doesn't mean do it again. He means now that he's rolled ten. a six and it's exploded, he has to roll another six side die yeah, for so the negative ne another negative. And Thank you, Alex, for explaining four. that. Yeah. I think it was a three. Where's so my that's negative six and, and that's t it's five. I don't know what it was. Uh, something in the single digits, we'll say, which is probably bad enough for something six, bad to happen to eight. you. Yeah. Uh, I will say her desired outcome of this is that um, she throws up her knife just in time and it catches the tip of your blade and kind of like spins it out of your hand and oh, no. clatters to the ground. Uh, listen, and I'm backing away. It was yeah. a joke, okay? Whatever You're not means. very funny, though. Yeah, well, you know, PB, uh, uh, I thought it was a bit funny. Yeah, he's funny looking. Hey, hey, fuck off. You can't see me. You're blind. And me, Mugu Guy Pan, that was a good one. And I keep backing away towards the wall. Uh, Kim. So. Dispatch the man standing by you. Yes. And uh, and as I finish my spin, I jump up and I stand where my hands just were, doing a fantastic complete 180. <laughs> so now I'm standing on the table and I see May Ong kick or hit the knife out of Jack's hand. And instead of jumping to the floor and, uh, you know, uh, subverting all the chairs on the in the room and all the tables, I literally run across the back of each chair with such grace, not knocking over one chair at all, just barely touching each. I make it across the entire room. Beautiful. So, and then with that, do a flying kick into Mei Ong's face, mm -hmm. obviously. Right. I'd like to see you try. Well, apparently I don't do very well. <laughs> so I've got a negative four <laughs> to my 15, which gives me a 11. No, you miss her. She dekes out of the way, and I will say... <laughs> and I go flying. <laughs> She's been standing by the front window. I'm going to say that you go clatter. Through. I don't think you go through it, but you do hit it, and it all like oh. shatters like spider glass. Well, don't you think I should? It should just be like... <laughs> <laughs> if you want to go through glass, you have the liberty to do so. Do Just like, okay, I'm picturing this scene where, you know, Just Jack is staying there with his hands up and Mayong is like, oh yeah, and then all of a sudden Kim Lu Han just comes flying past and it's like, you think it's going to be big? And he just goes right past the scene. And it's like, Ksh! amazing. You don't yeah. see him go through the window. <laughs> it's just like, here, smash. No, that's great. I love that. Um, wonderful. Okay, so it is May's turn. Um, she's going to take a second to pick up Jack's knife from the ground. Hey, 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 hey. Not, uh, not Bluebell. Anyone but Bluebell. Come on. Uh, she sneers at you. 
you know, you, your Americans and your possessions, your worldly belongings. You don't know what's really important. Oh, okay, and, what uh, is important? No, 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 no. What's important? <laughs> Power. Well, yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, she tries to throw a knife at you. Yeah, bring it on, she, bitch. As, I as she's glasses. stepping backward out the broken window. <clears throat> um... She, a 13? No. Can I no. catch it? Why don't you, they don't really have a reflex mechanic for this. It's all in the they? reflexes, let me just tell you. Uh, I'm going to say that's your choice of. I really want to catch like it. Like if you know he what? defends well. Gambling? A what? Gambling? Gambling is kind of like the luck roll. No, but Do I'll you have a skill I'll... gambling? No, but I'll roll for it still. Yeah, roll it. I need to. I will That's... say the. I'm gonna say the DC is ten. Sure, I want to catch it and throw it right back at her in one. All right. Because that's well, literally I, the Jack Burton thing. I won't let you throw it back at her. Yet, that's totally fine. You can try to catch it. Can I use a fortune dice to try to catch it? Yes, you can. Then I absolutely will. I so I yeah. Ten. So I'm go. saying you gotta hit ten. Yeah. So seven plus uh, six, which is beautiful. Over 10. Yeah, you catch the knife that she threw at you. <laughs> As she, she's basically using it as a distraction to just get the fuck out of Dodge. So and she like catch it midair. I'm like, no, 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 baby. She I'm ducks out the yet. window into the rain. Already? And, yep. She starts running down the street. <laughs> <laughs> Were you about to say something there, Jack? Well, it was. I had a cool line and shit. I don't know. Like, did something. I did I just hear Kim Lou jump through a window? Well, he kicked it. Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and you look and out of the front window, I stand up and I'm brushing myself off. That was ridiculous. Well, Can't believe we left her. I think there's still someone left. <laughs> and I, I gotta go after her. Can I not? Can I chase after her? On you turn? have to wait until shot two, and totally it's shot fine. three right now. Yeah. Uh, you can t definitely try to ch chase after her on your shot right now. We are looking at uh, BB and Sifu, and we have the big dude with a shotgun, and one guy on Philip. One guy on BB. Mm. So, as I, uh, after, right after I shout those lines to the others, I turn back to the man standing in front of me. And I slowly bring a hand up casually as he's dancing in front of me with his fists up. I can sense he's getting a little nervous. I can smell the sm sweat on him. And without even testing the string of the guitar, I tune it right back to where Agnes is supposed to be. And I say, you know what they call me? I got a name back in Chicago. What do you mean, man? That's a nickname. The name they call me for the music I make. And I'm just playing a little noodle on my guitar. This is Agnes. And my name is the Blues Boogeyman. Boo. I say boo, and I'm trying to intimidate him. So I'm gonna use a fortune die to uh, intimidate, which I don't really have, but uh, I'm gonna try anyway. That's cool. Try it. That's fantastic. I will. I will. I mean, I don't know if I'm such a D and D player. I'm like, you can have advantage. That doesn't exist. But <laughs> you just I want to reward it. you for your cool dialogue. <laughs> oh, we got a. Oh, so we got a four, a three, and a one. So a six of swerve. Mm hmm. And on top uh, of your seven untrained is thirteen. Yeah. Yeah, that intimidates him. Uh, you hear the bones in his knees start to quake. Uh, as his knees kind of start to shake, he's definitely afraid of you. I said, boo, now get! And, he... and uh, you hear the pitter-patter of feet as this dude fucking runs. And as he runs, can I use it as an attack so he trips yeah. running down the stairs and accidentally hurts himself? Or... Yeah, sure. Okay, yeah. he slips and he falls on a piece of broken glass. Yeah. And, and I can he hear dies. it. Um, he dies. At this point, you guys realize it's getting really smoky in here. That grease fire oh, was right. not being tended to in the kitchen. <laughs> yeah, I forgot to mention that the alarms are going on. Oh, home to mama, boy. There are no more. There are no more mooks standing. You got a big guy with a shotgun and a restaurant full of smoke. Shit. And all, off in the distance, we are, start to hear. Totally. No, it's Hong Kong. <laughs> whoop, 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 whoop. Uh, they do. I think they do. Dadu in Hong Kong. <laughs> <I have no laughs> <idea. laughs> like exotic birds Master of paradise. Master Sifu, uh, you are 
standing in basically a, a standoff with this crazy. Well, you're standing in a standoff. Seafood, you're gonna kill that guy as I bend over and pick up my hat. You seafood. Seafood. <laughs> yeah. What the fuck? That's his name. Seafood. All right. So knowing that both my arms are injured because I've been shot. I love how Mike gets up. Yeah. <laughs> <Every time. laughs> so much more fun this way. You can hear us. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so again, as he's got the shotgun there, I use the inside of my foot to kick it out of the way. Come around with the back kick, and then push kick him through into the kitchen, into the fire. Ooh, I like that. I, I like, like it. that very I much. Hope, I hope Aisha's At watching, least... and it's going to make a compilation video so that people can actually learn some martial arts techniques. <laughs> Yeah. From your, uh... <laughs> okay, just so you know, never fight this way. <laughs> uh, let's All right. see. So I guess I should actually throw some dice here. You should try. You should roll and then do it. <laughs> then That's what I told you guys at the beginning. I, I've been doing it that way. I appreciate it, Harlan. All right, so I have a negative two, so I got a 13. Yeah, you just hit him. That's all uh, I need. So you need to deal damage with your martial arts. Uh, is that a 15, I believe? Uh, well, it's a 7. Oh, yeah, you don't have... Mm -hmm. um, okay, so the big boy takes 7 more damage. Uh, and more listen. for going into the fire? Okay. Um, <laughs> I will say that there are mechanics for having a, an outcome of 4 or yeah. greater. You get to kind of dictate what happens. I will say you push him into the smoky kitchen... Okay. And that anyone who wants to find him is going to have a tough time. That sounds good. They so, may only find his teeth. Uh, <laughs> exactly. So you have a dangerous man in a very dangerous environment. There are flames licking the walls of this kitchen. You can see orange flickering um, from the dining room. He's going to try to make an attack against Sifu without being able to see him. So I'm going to subtract two from this result. And uh, he got real bad anyway. So... Um, you hear as uh, the shotgun blasts, and and uh, uh, you know what? The the fish tank explodes. Oh, and... not those gasoline filled fish tanks! No, he because the, the heat. He shoots the fish tank by accident because oh, he misses uh, Master Sifu. Um, and the water with the grease fire just makes it the, even more combustible. The fish, there's giant orange koi like flopping all over the the floor, and no. uh, and you hear. I'm gonna use the step. power of love and save them. Oh yeah. my god, you're oh, you poor. You poor fish. fish. Stick them in bowls of soup that have gone cold. <laughs> What's that called? It's like tears of something. It's called the power of love. The power of love. Huey oh. Lewis in the news. It's so, the power uh, of love. There are about four <laughs> giant fish, giant goldfish flopping around on the floor of this destroyed restaurant, and you hear footsteps out the back as this man with a shotgun is trying to make his escape. Yeah, and I'm at um, the uh, the waitress desk, and I grab a lollipop, and I'm okay. leaning by the front door. I'm like, you guys ready to go yet? <laughs> <laughs> um... As you are standing, so we're out of initiative now, I'm going to say. Yeah. As you are all standing around the wreckage of a restaurant, you think back to the days that you have had together where you have left establishments in a similar level of disarray. <laughs> oh, yeah. That reminds me. And I go into the till and start taking out the money. Mm. I keep forgetting to do this. Yeah, baby? Jack. <laughs> what? This is not how we get paid. No, no. That's, that's how I get paid. No, Jack. That what? ain't too bad. See through. Job, which we have failed. We just killed 15 guys. You're going to get mad at me over a couple of We did not protect who we were here to protect. Well, in all fairness, I was we outside. You guys money. Did. Seafood from Jack. the hardworking restaurant owners. Hey, hey, and the building's crumbling around us as we're playing. Hey, you were the guys inside. I was up by the car. I'm the driver. You didn't protect. It's her. true, you two. And I chime in. It's true. It's time to leave. You mustn't stand there. You're going to get burned. All right. Hey, would you guys give me a hand with this body? We can't leave it here. And I'm oh, pulling right. Lorraine up, and I'm trying to walk around, and I'm stepping on fish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I go over and I help him. Uh, Alex, did you say Kim Lou is still outside, like talking yes. at everyone through the glass as you are kind <laughs> yes. of, as you're, as you're kind of uh, directing uh, the action inside, uh, giving your Grab opinion about Grab what her. should be done with Lorraine. A teenage girl with pigtail braids uh, fishtails her bike to a stop 
in front of the restaurant, nearly crashing into the hood of Marion's car. Hey, hey, hey! Watch the merchandise! She is soaking wet from the rain, real flush from exertion, but she just, like, chucks her bike to the pavement I and the body as she sprints goes. inside. You recognize Whoa. Kitty Lou. The as she starts career. to sprint inside, I immediately grab her. No, and no, I, that's, that's I hold her. You can't run in there. It's burning building. You must Kim, stand out here. Kim, we've been through this, okay? I can Chill. take care of myself. Yeah, she's good, kid. Hey, yeah, she's a right. lollipop, and I grab another lollipop, and I give it to her. It's, again, Thank the you. dripping the dripping fucking, like, ceiling tiles are, like, all around it. Thanks, man. Yeah. No, no problem. All right. I don't uh, know who this kid is. Yeah, this is Kitty Liu, the bicycle courier. She, oh. uh... She's really fast. Your boss, Dr. Lee, has been using her to send you messages for the past couple months, and she's getting really good at finding you, no matter where you are in the city. Usually where the smoke is coming from. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, Mr. Swan Lee, Mr. Han, uh, Mr. Green, Mr. Castle, Dr. Lee needs you right away. All right, Something happened. Kid. And I reach in the till and I give her a few bucks. There you go. Thanks. Uh, and she just dodges back out the front door into the rain. Now, how are we seen in the eyes of the authorities? Are we like known want to, be to seen the, authorities? In the, eyes of the authorities? Let's get this body in the trunk. Okay, yeah. that's a great question. Um, you have instructions from your boss, Dr. Lee, that you are not to interact with the police because he feels like they're not 100% on the up and up. Excellent. Thank you very much for mm -hmm. that information. Mm -hmm. Guys. I hear police sirens and fire departments coming. We should get out of here. Well, help us with the body. <laughs> Absolutely. There's three of you in there. Come on. I'll get in the car. Oh, the trunk's open. Oh, okay. Yeah, Phoebe and I, we bring the body out and dump it in the trunk. Great. There we go. All right. Slamming down the hood and I get in the driver's seat. You guys all pile in? All pile in. All right. Sifu, you with us? I take a moment just to look back and reflect and think about all the wasted lives Aww. and all the bad choices that these people could have made to turn their lives around at any given moment and I get in the car god damn it seafood as Jack Green peels away from the curb he cuts off another driver and they lay on the horn <laughs> we watch as the car accelerates gets very small very quickly and then the camera pans up to the sky to the darkening clouds uh, we're going to cut to a split screen and do a travel montage so oh, nice. Yeah, boys, I want you guys to think of a shot for this scene where something cool happens. You can do something or something can happen around you. I'm going to start with Kitty. So on the left side of the split screen, we follow Kitty Liu as she pumps the pedals of her bicycle through the rain. She speeds through a wide alleyway where ancient men are sitting under patio umbrellas, whooping each other at go. She splashes out into a street, nearly getting clipped by a taxi. She pedals down the street. It's sloping down towards the harbor. And Kitty sees this long grate in the pavement uh, spewing foul steam. A rickshaw has its wheel lodged in and traffic buzzes by on the other side. So she dekes out onto the sidewalk and around it, uh, narrowly missing a whole crowd of school children. <laughs> <laughs> on the right side of the screen, our protagonists in the car are making their way through the city also. What is happening in the car? Yo, guys, check out this, uh, this track I got. And I go and I open up my tape deck because that's what they had. Yeah, totally. And I press play and I turn up the music in the An back. Eight and track. and uh, I'm a believer by the monkeys comes on. fairy tales. <laughs> You're not we're not listening to this. What? Not listening to this. I change it to the uh, the blues station. Boop pew do now this is music. I don't grab None your guitar and try to play music on it. This is my vehicle. And as you guys are arguing about the song that you should be listening Shit. to, you notice that there is a moving van parked with uh, two men who are carrying a pane of glass across the road in front of the car. Oh, fuck! <laughs> and I and smash through it. Smash through it! <laughs> Uh, I'm like fuck, and then right behind it is a is like a, a ramp with watermelons at the top. Okay, <laughs> great, yeah. yeah. And I slam. On you're the worried about the you're worried about the kid hitting the <laughs> car with the bicycle. Yeah. <laughs> Visceral watermelon guts go flying into the air. <laughs> oh shit! <clears throat> Sorry guys. Damn it, Jack! I could drive better than you. Yeah, you're fucking blind. You look I back, know. and oh, Kim Lu Han Kim Lu Han sits in the back seat. 
he crosses his arms and looks out with kind of a sarcastic, like, this is so silly look. And then he and then he turns back and he has a piece of watermelon in his hand. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> And actually, Kim Lou, as you're looking out the window, like business as usual, Jack is driving like a crazy asshole. You catch sight of a flower shop as you're driving uh, past. Oh, yes. And my mind wanders off to my uncle's bonsai and flower shop in the other side of Hong Kong where he's got this young lady that works for him that I've grown to know and I think I like. What's She's, her name? Her name? I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I've been too shy to ask. Aww. But she's um, my uncle's uh, friend's daughter and she works at the shop. And uh, yeah, I just have this image of her uh, putting the plants out in the windowsill. And then when we catch eyes, I immediately go back to uh, doing what my uncle asked me to do and counting out the pebbles from a, a pot that was holding a bonsai. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Okay, great. So, yeah, the camera moves through the streets and alleys of Hong Kong, following Kitty and our heroes in turn as they take different paths back to the Golden Candle headquarters. Ah. Now, at HQ, we see Jack Green's car pull up to a tall building a few blocks from the harbor. It's mm. an imposing mass of stone and glass with two huge stone lions carved to appear as if guarding the wide entrance. The lions flank a set of stairs leading up to the doors, and above the doors, a sign with modern-looking calligraphy proclaims that this is the Golden Candle Company. Inside, the grand lobby is a scene of dull chaos. The marble columns are wounded with bullet holes, and a few human corpses lie in puddles of congealed blood. A plume of smoke leaks out of a stairwell leading downstairs off to the right illuminated by flickering light. There's a couple of employees wearily dragging themselves upstairs, two of them not looking great. Uh, someone exits the elevator as you guys are coming in through the lobby and just runs full tilt through the lobby and outside carrying a parcel. Michael, or sorry, Sifu, four of your students stand near the elevator discussing the events. I spin around and run after the kid with the parcel. I was going to say, there's no way to catch or, like, clothesline the guy running. Oh, this is someone that you recognize. He's got, like, a, like a mailroom uniform on from downstairs. Uh, and this parcel. It. Sorry? I still want it. Yeah, you can definitely clothesline this poor boy. Maybe he's, line. like, trying to get that parcel somewhere. What well, I again, I think as he's running by, just kind of grab the back of his jacket. Great, and, yes. And, and pull him down onto the ground. Oh, Sifu, yes. Can I do something for you? Where is it that you are going in such a hurry when... Look I'll... around! Oh, I have to bring this parcel. There's a moving truck at back. We are taking everything. Don't you know? No. We what has were... happened here? What is going on? The headquarters was attacked. Ooh. Who did it? Attacked. Uh, Who attacked us? I don't know. This is like a 17-year-old boy who's like got hired maybe a month ago. Damn it, right, kid. What's in the package? And I take the package out of his hand. Oh, no, sir. He tries to keep it back from you. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm yeah. under strict orders to... Yeah, oh, I no, know. No. And I open the package. Uh, It is a box full of straw. Do yeah, this you... seems real fucking valuable, Chung. Do you go through the straw? <laughs> What's in it? Uh, important artifacts. Dr. Lee asked me if I could please bring it to the moving truck. I, I have so many more upstairs. I'm s can I go? I'm going to do a detective role, see if he's telling the truth. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, here we go. Boom, boom. Here we go. Oh, boxcars, baby. Okay, so you have to re-roll both dice. All right. Oh, a two and a one. So okay, a so that is a very good success. Uh, and it means that you know that this boy, you, you detect a faint smell of urine. This boy has wet himself within the past hour, and he is terrified. What's the deal, baby? Is he Maddie? He's scared. Look at his pants. <laughs> oh, oh shit. he blushes really bad. I kind of pushed through the three of them standing in front of me. Where's Dr. Lee? Is he upstairs? Y yes, he is. I say we forget all this and go upstairs. What are we waiting for? Yeah, all right, but I'm going to hold on to this. 
Oh, oh no, Mr. Uh, I'm sorry. I need oh, to Oh, come on now, Jack. Stop being silly. Obviously, Dr. Lee is sending him or his artifacts elsewhere. Something's going on. We need to find out what's going on. All right, <laughs> I give him the I give him the package back. Oh, thank you. He bows and then just fucking books it around the back of the building. If that comes back to bite us in episode eight, I'm gonna blame you. All right. And I, and I cross my arms like this. Uh, as you guys turn back to the lobby, you see Lily Chong. She's standing in a smart black pantsuit beside her polished reception desk with an irritated look on her face, holding a spray bottle and a soft cloth, trying to polish away some gore from the patina. Uh, she's halfway obscured by her giant telephone terminal that's spewing showers of smark sparks at odd intervals, and the mirror that used to hang on the wall behind her is broken. Every few seconds, she turns to the body of a hooded woman beside her that's lying on the floor, and she gives it a sharp kick with her slipper and then goes back to polishing her desk. Uh, hey, Lillian. What's going on? Oh, Jack. Always nice to see you. Yeah, you too, baby. <clears throat> she watches you guys all approach. I was just working this afternoon, you know, working late, and uh, these hoodlums came in and started shooting the place up. It's awful. Look at what they did to my desk. Yeah, you seem pretty calm about it, to be honest. Kind of looks like uh, the scene we just left, eh, boys? Not you, BB. Oh, your mission did not go very well? No, well, uh, Kim, you're better at this. Never mind all that. What's going on here? <laughs> oh, I would say about an hour ago, 40 invaders came, stole 40. a lot of things. Did you say 40 invaders or before the invaders? Four, zero. Oh my god, I thought the translators were wrong again. 40 invaders, that's impossible. Hey, didn't the boy at the front say that they were trying to get everything out of here? They were leaving the place? Yes, well, I don't want my desk packed up like this. It's disgusting, you know? This fucking bitch, I killed her, <laughs> kicks this woman beside her desk again with her slipper. <laughs> these like are one of the of people? Bitch. Yeah, this is one of these people. The attackers? Yeah, disgusting. I bend down and check her body. Great. Uh, she's lying prone, and as you turn her over, you notice she has a dark green circle embroidered on the front of her black clothes. Okay. Check her body, Jack. How's her body? Everybody, sh just calm the fuck down. <laughs> check, make sure you check her body. Is hey, anybody I'm, checking I'm her body? I'm checking it, BB. All right, all you right, guys all right. always work by this uh, diplomatic method, talking anyway. Listen, that's how she we goes back to polishing right? her shit. Uh, the woman <laughs> has got a, a couple of big knives on her, and that's about it. Oh, shit. Mm. And a green no ID, something? No personal belongings. A green circle embroidered on the I front. I recognize of her. that, and I tap it. You're like tapping like a bloody yeah, spot. Like, <laughs> oh, I thought you, you made gotta... you tap the body, and I was like, I don't know. I tap, like... I tap the, uh, the, <laughs> the jade colored circle. You gotta. So you're tapping again, Jack. You gotta tell me what it is. I'm tapping at. She's got this thing. I know what it is. It's the fucking things. I oh. just realized that. It's a I symbol. Think, I think only two of you can read, right? Because. Uh, I can't read. You can't read, and and I can read can't. Braille. <laughs> Braille very well. Uh, cool. Lily, but I recognize the sigil, do I not? Yeah, Lily looks away, and she's like, "Oh yes, they, they all had this this stupid green circle on them." Yeah, I know what this is. All right, let's go see Doctor Lee. Do we know what it is? Uh, you can all roll police if you like. I do would I know like. Do my backstory? Or do I have to roll police as well? I don't know. Uh, you know because of your background. Okay, just check. You know. Yeah, I know. Well, tell us. It's the it's the, the fucking thing. What do you mean? <laughs> oh, thanks. It's the jade wheel, guys. Come on. I've been in oh. Hong Kong for, what, a month, and I know better than you guys do? The jade, the jade wheel. wheel? Yeah, I mean, it's green, and it's round. doesn't mm. take a, you know. Anyway, do you guys know any uh, electricians or something? Look at this telephone terminal. It's awful. It's just like spraying sparks. <laughs> Kiddo, you should get out of here, man. There's a lot of uh Hey, nonsense. shut up. You get out of here. I'm trying to. Let me get Dr. the fuck Lee out of here. To you, talk to you. The... you know what? Hey, I don't even talk to you neither. He's upstairs. By the way, Kim uh, Luhan you know, we'll... yeah. looks at the picks up the the telephone as it's sparking and he says, I uh wish I knew something so I could help you, but I do not. Uh, sorry. <laughs> I go no, it's the fine, Kim. Don't worry about it. Now, in a cutscene that's kind of like 
seems really out of place and it looks like the editors just spliced it in afterwards yeah <laughs> I, I i i'm standing with sifu and almost like cardboard i say sifu i wanted to thank you for taking my guitar out of the burning restaurant <laughs> <laughs> it's very important to me <laughs> just tie up some plot holes real quick <laughs> that's okay. hilarious that's awesome i love how you cut it in like they this they guitar <laughs> is not an object, but an extension of yourself. It would you be know, wrong to leave it. You are wise, Sifu. Let us go to upstairs. And as we uh, walk out of, of uh, Lillian, I say, oh, by the way, Dr. Kwan's body's in the trunk, and I toss the keys. Get it out, will you? What? Jesus Christ, Jack. <laughs> and I go bang the fucking elevator thing like six times. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Uh, as you approach the elevator, uh, Sifu... Uh, there are about four of your students standing around kind of discussing the events of what happened. Oh, Master! Where were you? We could have used you! Unfortunately, I was busy with something else. Oh, someone with <laughs> your expertise must have had a very important mission. Please, tell me. What went on here? Oh, the Jade Wheel! You know of them? That's right. That I do not. Please, impart me with your knowledge, so that they, I may too. They I'm attacked afraid. this place and stole lots of guns. They were downstairs in the armory, and also upstairs where we have all the other things that they stole. <laughs> Usually we just have cake in the boardroom. <laughs> uh, it was awful. They killed so many of us. Are there no. Any Sorry? Are there any injured? Uh, they're in the hospital already. Oh, okay. And you are all <laughs> Probably. fine. Probably. And you are all well? We are okay. The one guy is like cradling his arm a little bit, but he's he's like, oh, oh it's just a scratch. <gasps> <laughs> Thank you, master. Uh, I won't make you roll it, but just mechanically, yeah. what does it look like when you heal people? Uh, Karate Kid. <laughs> There's no like glowing light or no, no. Just it's just it's the warmth and the heat and the passing on of my energy to his, making it heal. You see his eyes grow really bright and uh, a tear shines uh, in his eye. Oh, oh, thank you. No I'm problem. I'm in your debt forever. No. Dude, what the fuck did you do? Defending to that this place, you have served us all a great purpose. Now, ice it. For three days, take some aspirin, sleep well. Yes, master. And I, you guys go in the elevator. I turn to Jack while we're in the elevator. <clears throat> so, Jack, tell me, what do you know about these Jade Circle? No, it's a Jade Wheel. Sorry, the Jade Wheel. Tell me, what do you know about these people? Uh, all right, yo, you know, so... You I only got here about a month ago, and back where I was from, uh, I was playing some cards with these boys down in Las Vegas. It's sort of like Hong Kong, but better. And I, I won, know what Las Vegas is. Thank yeah, you, sir. I won a few hands of cards against them, and they were sort of pissed off. And uh, let's just say <laughs> they don't like me. <laughs> so you lost a card game to them, and so they don't like you. No, but that doesn't no, tell no, me anything no, about no. the Jade Reel. I won the card game. Uh, but they didn't like the way I won the card game, if you know what I mean. Uh, Ace up the sleeve and all that. And the, and the truth of the matter is that when I walked away with all the dough, they got a little bit upset, and uh, and they and they and they wanted to make a bit of an example. But wait, so you were here, and they are here because of you? No, 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 no. Maybe I don't know. Uh, but look, the truth is that uh, and the elevator dings. They were at the top floor. Ding. Ah, there you go. And we're going to stop in the mid game. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> we're at two for two. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, ladies and gentlemen. It's the time of the show where we stop the action and we run over to the Facebook group to ask the question that's on everybody's mind. I don't know what the question is. What is the Jade Circle? <laughs> what is the Jade Wheel for the myth 15th pony? Um, so, uh, yeah, first and foremost, hope everybody's enjoying the game. I'm in a blast. Great job, Jack. 
Joe, fantastic game fantastic. so far. Thank mm-hmm. you. Very, very cool. Um, but uh, what's, How about, the what's the name of the courier girl? Well, it's up hey. to Joe to No, that's a pretty good one. I would just kind of frantically start looking through my notes, so why not? Michael, thank you very much. What is the name of the bicycle courier? Okay, bicycle courier. You're talking both, both names? First yeah, and last? I first and last name. Okay, that sounds tough. So let's say a 1D6 probably, eh? Sure. Yeah. Posted right now. So the first six people to answer correctly, uh, you'll be entered into a draw. And if you win, then you will win an experience point. So good luck and happy hunting. <laughs> Hope everybody's enjoying the game so far. Looks like they are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is going really well, if I may say so myself. You may, and you're all right. It's going fantastically well. I'm excited. I gotta say that the type of combat is very refreshing. The very new combat fun. system. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's very satisfying too. Yeah, it is. I, I really like being a permissive DM where like, oh, you want it to happen? Cool, cool, cool. As long you're as it doesn't break the game, then <laughs> so, like, yeah, you're you not can... normally that type? No, I definitely am, but this system lends itself towards that style of gaming really well, and I really like it so far. This is my first time playing Feng Shui, Feng Shui so any rules lawyers out there, sh- shove it up your ass. That's right. <laughs> they, they, if they're watching Invictus, they should know by now that uh, pretty much anything goes, or as Alex we likes to say, up. we make shit up. We make shit up. We make shit up. We do. All right, mid-game post. No one has answered yet. So. No one. Oh, shit. People I'm, are asking how to get, I'm sorry, have you posted I didn't it? post it in the stream, my bad. Nobody's answering. Why isn't anybody responding? It's my fault. <laughs> That's Hold just on. what he sounds like, too. That is, <laughs> that is my accent. I've right. been having a personal giggle every time Alex has some dialogue. And he just <laughs> starts going, it's oh, Michael, God, too. With, yeah, with the... Michael's is tougher to notice because his lag, but Alex is... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Uh, I'll let you try my Wu-Tang style. Okay, we got Rin. John. Yes, Hold Rin on. even got the spelling correct. What? Very- Godpool, Mark, Kellen. There we got. We Michael, got six. There's our six. Okay, here we go. 1D6. Let me clear this off. Ba-bam. All right, we have... Number three, that is one, two, three, Mr. Godpool! Godpool Gryffindor. Godpool The mid-game oh. post. Well done, buddy. Nice. Nicely done. I think that's two for two, right? He, Gor- he wins Gor- too Gor- often. I should stop slipping him the answers because he's that's abusing right. the system. Too. Yeah, yeah. Start totally. slipping him the time. Is All he right. abusing the system if you give him the answers? Um, No. There's not really a system in place. That's the first problem. Ah, I see. Sort of just made up on the fly. Oh, Michael's not back yet, so we can't start. Okay. Oh, so, that's all right. Um, how's everybody doing? Just fart on the sly. Oh, there we go. He's back now. You farted on the slides? No, start on the fly. Just no, fart I on the sly. On the slides. <laughs> that's why I never go after you at the water park. <laughs> <laughs> just in case. Just because right. I fart on the slides? Come on. Without further ado, back to Miss Joe Fallick for the continuation of this epic game. All right. Um, let me find where we left off. Bing, bing. <laughs> the elevator doors open gracefully at the top floor to reveal a wood-paneled hallway. Shaded lights on one wall cast a dim, gr- dim greenish glow. And as you exit the elevator, your footfalls are muffled by the high pile shag carpet. The distant end of the corridor is overseen by a mammoth piece of mahogany furniture behind which a very tiny woman is chain smoking. Dr. Lee seems to only hire the most severe secretaries. A brass named plate on her desk reads Cecilia Chin. She wears a dress almost reminiscent of a school uniform underneath a dark bathing cap of hair. She has huge round spectacles and a tiny nose out of whose nostrils leak twin spires of smoke. She looks over her glasses and over the top of the desk at you. I could smell you anywhere, Cecilia. Hello. Mm. How are you doing this this day? You're safe in the attack? I've been better to tell you the truth, BB. Mm. She pushes her glasses back up on her nose and exhales smoke. We need to speak to the main man. Oh, I know. Dr. Lee's been waiting for you to come back for about an hour now. Yeah, well, we got a little tied up. 
Yes, and how is Dr. Lorraine Kwan? Well, that's kind of what we wanted to talk to. You know, I guess you could say she was a little lightheaded. Did she get shot in the face? <laughs> yeah, her head came off. <laughs> okay, good. That's what I figured from the joke. He's not very funny, you know. No, he's not. He... Okay. Uh, he's, I mean, I'm telling he's... you, it's the translators. The joke's really funny in Chinese. <laughs> Seafood doesn't seem to be laughing. You, you know where the door, it's just that way. Please, go on. Uh, you know the way mm. towards Dr. Lee's offices. <laughs> and as we're, as we're walking there, I, I say to Jack, so this type of carpet is exactly what I'd be looking for for my recording studio. Yeah, it I muffles know. I the sound. picked it out for you. Look, it's perfect. It's called shag carpeting, and I got the mm -hmm. color all, uh, all mm -hmm. out for Just you. Just dampens worry. the sound, so all you can hear is beautiful Agnes in the recording. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're <laughs> one of these I, days, Jack, one of these days, I'm going to put out my own record. As you're talking, record. I hang back, so you continue to think you're talking to me. And, and I go to Kim, and I'm like, I picked the color of his shag carpeting. It's like vomit. It's going to be perfect. <laughs> And then I walk back up to BB. Yeah, totally, buddy. I hear you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just can't wait. Can't wait. Two heavy wooden doors emblazoned with a golden flame motif. And beyond those, a huge room reclines before you. The camera pans across the floor-to-ceiling windows on two walls, displaying Hong Kong in its harbor stretched out, twinkling at sundown. Vertical blinds cleave the room into countless slices of shabby sunlight and darkness, moving slowly across the contents and occupants of this room. We see motes of dust dance and settle on twisted Chinese bonsai, the heavy carpet, the ceremonial armor adorning the wall. We watch incense burning at the corners of the room, smoke curling and unwinding lazily. Dr. Morris Lee stands at the window with his hands clasped behind his back, surveying the city. The camera captures him first in profile, nose close to the glass. His wrinkled face is striped with shadow. Dr. Lee turns towards you as you enter. Good evening, gentlemen. Yo. I clap my hands and bow. Yes, Lee. We have when failed I see Kim and Sifu, and I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, will you debrief me on your mission? Please sit. And he gestures to several stuffed armchairs arrayed in front of his desk, then motions for two servants who step out of the wall's deep shadow and quietly go about their business. Yes, uh, please, what what happened this afternoon? Uh, well, you know, it was your girl May, if I can be frank. What do you mean? Okay, okay. This, is, this is just what I gathered. I wasn't in the place, obviously. I was outside driving like you hired me to do. And, uh, you know, I'm pretty sure she um, shot Lee in the head. Quan, I should say. May shot Dr. Quan? Yeah, and look, hey, I didn't let her leave. I was oh, neck to neck, and then there was some, <laughs> there was some action there, actually. BB, you were there, and you, I know you didn't see it. But, but anyway, and then we were going at it with knives, and she, uh, well, she got away, too. But then that big fucking fat cook came out. Remember that guy, Seafood? And he came out, and he was really pissed off like that, and then... Uh, I think you got away too, actually. But uh, but Quan is uh, she? Well, she's in the trunk. She died as well. And I said, Doctor Lee's just watching. Jack. Surprisingly, Mister Lee, that's pretty much exactly what happened. Yeah. With the exception that it was not May. Who mm. shot, but definitely May was working with the group that did. So someone shot Doctor Quan, but it was not May. However, she was betraying you. And you. Yes. And me, by extension, the Golden Candle Company. Well, <clears throat> I had no idea this might be the case, but I suppose it is in line with the events of this afternoon. Do you mm -hmm. think these uh, events that happened at the restaurant w with Miss Quan, Quan, do you think they were somehow related to the Green Circle or Wheel, whatever <laughs> this company is? Jade Wheel. Dr. Lee looks sharply at Jack. Mm. Yes, it is the Jade Wheel. How do you know about this? Uh, a tattoo. Many of the people downstairs have the Jade Wheel emblem on them. Ah, yeah. astute observation, Sifu. Yes, thank you. 
Yes, it appears that the Jade Wheel is responsible for at least the attack on the headquarters. And, um, well, I regret that Dr. Kwan perished at the hands of probably the Jade Wheel this afternoon as well. She was responsible for some important work. Well, this necessitates some education about the business at hand, and the servants come back into the uh, your field of view, offering a platter, plum wine, green tea, cigars, all that kind of stuff. And then they leave the room. Is this usual for them to offer us such fine things for failure? Oh, well, call it um, an advance. Hmm. Actually, about that, uh, Lee, and I kind of hop into the chair and I kind of walk over to him and lean across the table. I was wondering if we could talk about that, actually. I know it's not the perfect time. I'm like, well, in earshot of everybody. <laughs> I'm like, actually, a pretty bad time, Jack. I know, but listen, I think you don't need me anymore. I'm just a driver. I was thinking maybe if I could get some cash, like US dollars, I could be out of your hair like nobody's business. I just need to get home. Right now, you have some utility to me. Yeah. Cigar? No, no, no. I'm okay. I got a cigarette on me somewhere, I think. He offers you your chair again. Yeah. What is not immediately evident, gentlemen, is the scale of the attack we experienced. I'm sure that your keen observation skills have shown you what happened in the lobby is... It's pretty awful, but uh, not only were lives lost today and valuable items stolen from the company. And he takes a second. What kind of valuable items? My child, Mr. Green. What? My only son was kidnapped. You have a son? Yes, I do. My darling Benny. Benny was with his nanny at the park, and he was taken. I suspect by the same jade wheel, all of these attacks occurred simultaneously. What other rationale have you for this? <clears throat> Truly, there is no greater treasure than that of our children. Thank you, Sifu, yes. Well, I mean... I am sorry for your loss. Please, how may we help? I hope that we may recover the boy as soon as possible. But first, oh, there's much I should tell you. As you know, the Golden Candle Company deals largely in the import and export of pharmaceuticals, geological survey for natural resources, research, development, important archaeological sites, along with some other important but lesser known industrial interests. You yourselves have been involved in these endeavors to a greater or lesser degree. He looks pointedly at Sifu and then Jack, respectively, <laughs> since you're higher. And Dr. Lee stands up and starts pacing. What you do not know is that the Golden Candle Company is, shall we say, a daughter company of a larger endeavor. There are important and powerful forces at work in this world. The events of today lead me to my attempts to acquire a force that will defend our interests and our lives. The four of you here before me have proven yourselves as capable and honorable as I could ask for. Mr. Philip Castle, for example, you have been working for me these past six years and your extreme talents regarding the disposal of folks who would mean ill towards the golden candle have come in handy innumerable times. Makes me wonder what you would be capable of should you still possess the vision you were born with. Mm. If I do, if I may, sir, sometimes the vision can cloud what's actually in front of you. My other sights have proven very useful, senses rather. Well said, good sir. Master Sifu to Swanli, well, you have worked with me these five years past, and I can say I've had no greater kung fu talent within the walls of the Golden Candle Company. 
the dedication you have had for teaching your pupils and the elegance with which you live your life every day is evident in your every movement. And Master Kim Luhan, despite your young age and your preoccupations, shall I say, with beautiful women, I see Master Swanley's lessons have taken root within your being. Your discipline and honor are already becoming something to be remarked upon. Why, thank you. (laughs) Now, Marion Green, you are the most recent hire of these, and though you have had few opportunities to prove your worth, you seem a steady hand and a reliable wit. And I am lucky you have come to me here at the Golden Candle. I have no intention of releasing you from your contract. He takes a deep breath and looks at you over the top of his spectacles. If you are willing to accept this, shall we call it a promotion? That I'm offering you, I will indulge your curiosity. Hmm. Well... I've been working here long enough. I don't see why not, as I pour myself a glass of the whiskey. And I take a sniff of it, just to see if I'm being tested. Do I smell any poison, or is it pure? No, it's totally pure. And it's actually real good quality, too. Nice stuff. Mm -mm. I'll do it, because I like you, Lee. And on account that this is fantastic whiskey. What do you guys say? Yeah, if I'm getting paid, that was... You said you'd be paying me? Yeah, Yeah, okay. Yes, we will call it a promotion for now. I will be able to finance any, uh, shall we say, investments that need to be made. I don't want anything for myself. In fact, I don't drink, so thank you very much for the drink. However, my uncle's flower business has been suffering, and I'm sure if I were to help you that maybe you would look nicely upon my uncle's flower and bonsai business, perhaps in the future. And uh, Dr. Lee gestures towards one of the tables uh, beside the window to a bonsai tree that you recognize, the the pot that it is growing in. Aha, my uncle's fine work. I'm very pleased that you have one in your home. Indeed one of the just most beautiful bonsai trees I've ever had. (laughs) I'm very sorry about your son. I'm sure we can bring him to safety. After all, these bonsai trees that my uncle makes are much like my own children. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Uh, And then he looks to Sifu. Master? With respect. And I get up and I walk around the room a little bit, <laughs> hands behind my back. I have come to question some of the things that this company deals in. And I sometimes battle within myself on the personal honor I am sacrificing to aid you. It is without a doubt that we will be parting ways very soon. However, your boy is in need, and he is innocent. I will retrieve your boy. Dr. Morris Lee stands from his chair and gives you a very low bow. (laughs) And I turn to BB and I say, what about his boy? His boy is missing. Oh, shit. Mm Mm-hmm. I believe the attackers this afternoon at the restaurant were part of the same faction responsible for the invasion of our headquarters and the kidnapping of my sweet son, Benny. They are called the Jade Wheel and they are dangerous indeed. I have reason to expect the Jade Wheel represents a greater enemy than even they let on. A keen eye will recognize the sure signs of their intentions in the carnage of this invasion. Firstly, The artifacts stolen from the golden candle are those which are strong with chi forces, their wonderful influencers of feng shui. Additionally, take for example the mirrors they have broken. Why destroy a mirror? 
It could have been an errant bullet, sure. These miscreants, however, are extremely precise. No, I do not think so. I believe we are dealing with gangsters who are trying to win a very, very important turf battle. Have any of you heard of Feng Shui? Yeah, it's that thing like, you know, you move your furniture in your room mm. so it like, feels really good, right? That's right. I've heard of that. Yeah, we're doing it in his uh, recording studio, actually. You gotta see the exactly. color. Exactly. Guess the color of his guess the color of his shag carpet. Yeah, it's right. it's good. I would love to, but this Feng Shui is different, Mr. Green. It is the art of geomancy, the practice of Feng Shui. Can imbue its practitioners with qi. The better the Feng Shui of a particular location, the more qi available to those who control the site. Sounds simple, doesn't it? I believe the Jade Wheel have, in this attack on our headquarters, revealed themselves to be players in the Qi War, as you yourselves have unwittingly been since you joined the Golden Candle Company. The company's core tenets have been, and always will be, will be to preserve dignity, morality, and harmony. There are forces in this world that would see to the disruption of those tenets in favor of their own power and prosperity and the suffering of any who would stand in their way. We must not allow this to happen. We need you. I need you now to go to the only known hideout of the Jade Wheel and see what powers they have accumulated. If my son is to be found, he is likely there. Please. He's only a little boy. And then he takes a minute to compose himself. Mm. Do you have any questions? Yeah, if you want Feng Shui. And I stand up and I go to a giant plant and I push it. <clears throat> Since I came in, I felt like that felt weird. I think now it's not blocking the doorway as much and you got this flow. He's just kind of watching you. Oh, yes. Thank you. That's uh, much better. Yeah. There, there, I say to Dr. Lee as I place my hand on his shoulder and I stand up and walk around the desk. There, there, I'm sure we will move with grace through this area and use the feng shui to our advantage and bring your son home safely. Thank you, Master Han. Uh, so he says to you, if you need any resources, the Golden Candle Company can provide for you. Please take vengeance on the lives lost today. And if you see any packages or crates marked with our logo, know that these must be returned to us so that we can keep them safe. Whoa. Now. Hold on. This dude. Chung something. He was in the lobby and he took a crate and I cracked it open and there was an artifact in it. Was that you or did he take it? Oh, we've been relocating the artifacts that were not stolen to a more secure location. All right, just checking, because I was... <laughs> See, this is why we need men like you, Mr. Green, leaving no stone unturned. Yeah, stone unturned. Uh, he says, in the fish packing district, there's a warehouse where we know, we suspect... The Jade Wheel has operations, and he uh, he motions to a servant to bring a scrap of parchment and a, an inkwell and a and a brush, and he writes out the address of the warehouse and hands it to Sifu. He says, uh, "Please be very careful." All right. Well, uh, cool. What floor is the... You said there's like an, something we could... Resources? What's that? Above? Below? Yes. Uh, I, I mean, he pulls out his checkbook. Uh, any... What? I mean, I could... Oh, yeah. No. $1,500. I, I need 1500 and we're good. How about 1500 yuan? Uh, and he writes you a check. Uh, no. Well, look. Look. This is... I... I if you need any weapons, uh, Sifu can lead you down to where we keep our, our stores. Jack, with respect, please, look around you. 
and see the laws of karma taking place. This man has done no good, and yet, because of his action, his child is suffering. Please, start choosing a better path for yourself. What? Because I want money? What's wrong with that? <laughs> what you want it for, Jack, and why you need it in the first place. Well, if it's okay with you, that's my own personal business. And uh, frankly, just so everybody is on the up and up, when Lee hired me, he said he'd give me the money, 1500 bucks, for my own business, and, you know. Have I not been paying you a salary, Mr. Well, Green? I don't think so. <laughs> I don't know how to cash. I don't know how to cash a check here. I don't know how to bank account. Did you not see what happened all around us downstairs, Jack? Was that part of your business as well? Well, that wasn't my business per se. Look, maybe, maybe I just wanted to get out of here because I felt it was going to be dangerous. Don't you understand that my noble intentions have might have gotten his son hurt in some way, shape, or form? Not. Oh no, I'm sure my son is is attaining no an injury through no no fault of your own, Jack. Please don't don't take it so hard. Well, <laughs> misunderstanding yeah, your argument. That's that's what I'm saying. You know, I, it hurts. It takes it hard. Oh, Look, my... and I turn around. You write me a check for fifteen hundred dollars. You don't have to sign it. We bring your son back, you sign it, and I'm out of here. Deal? Absolutely. You handshake on it? He holds out both of his hands. All right. And I'm looking at the other guys. You're seeing this. And I shake both of his hands. Kim kind of rolls his eyes. Look, don't roll your eyes at me. Look, you guys have a life here. I don't. Mine's back there. I, w I want a one-way ticket to Hong Kong and no return flight. I don't know what's waiting for me, but I gotta get out of here, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> Please, Jack. A cost for a flight is like fifty dollars. <laughs> yeah, well, I also owe some money. Okay, let's just. And I push past them. No judgment here, Jack. Yeah, Jack. yeah. And I turn around and I point at Doctor Lee. All right, but that was a promise, and you guys all saw it. Benny's back, and we're out of here. Thank you, thank you very much. And I walk into the hallway next to the smoking lady. God. I look at the other two and follow. And I come out to the hallway and I greet Jack in the hallway. So tell me, Jack, what do you know about this jade wheel? Oh, no, look, that, that, it's not, who cares? They're a bunch of nobodies. They fucking, look, they try to hunt me down. They try to whack me. It's a terminal. It's a, it's an American term. It's, it, it doesn't mean what you think. They tried to kill me. <laughs> And they didn't get they didn't get to, and that's it. That's the end. Have you ever heard of the gang, the Tiger Claw? No. After all, they are also a very dangerous gang, and I wonder if they have any affiliation. For I am looking for my brother, who is captured by Tiger Claw, and I vow to one day avenge them. Cecilia my family. sitting behind the desk. Tiger Claw, my ass. Are you guys done in there? Can you go? I'm reading here. And I turn. You know, Cecilia, the Tiger Claw is a very, very dangerous gang. And in fact, if they have any dealings with Big Jade Wheel, then we will have a big problem on our hands. All right, all right. Tell it to Dr. Lee. Hey, but Perhaps I should do that. Smoke, uh, Cecilia. Yeah, yeah, she gives you a smoke. And I lean over so for her to light it. And she, like, looks at you for a second and then goes back to reading. All right. And I pull out my matches, which I've had all along. And I say, all right, so what's the address, uh, Seafood? And I walk over to him. So just before turning out the door, I look at Dr. Lee again. Please, every moment we have is a moment to start making new choices. Thank and you. And walk out. Thank you, Seafood. Yes, thank you. And I pass the address to Jack. I can't Hopefully. read this scribbledy scook. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, you don't. You don't this read mean uh, shit to Chinese me. script what does it at say? all. <sighs> then let us go to your car, Jack. Well, and I'm just be on our way. But like, how far? We're we talking about half an hour drive. Like, I gotta take a shit. Let's let's just. I'm playing this out a little bit. You know. 
Um, the headquarters of the Golden Candle Candle Company is like probably just a couple of blocks away from the harbor, which is another couple of blocks away from the fish packing district. So not too far. Okay. Look, so, and I turn to the other guys as we walk down the hall towards the elevators. So if I'm reading this right, and I was sleeping through half of his story, so I'm sorry if I'm wrong. His son got taken by the Jade Wheel. He's asking us to go get him back. And we've all agreed to this, right? I'm surprised you heard all that through sleeping. Yeah, well, it's not really too complex. I heard Benny, and then he said he'd give me 1500 bucks if I bring him back. Look, I'm thinking something here is a bit fishy. No, no? I do not disagree with you, Jack. And I'm not just talking about the fish market, if you know what I mean. Ah! <laughs> yeah, is that a pun? <laughs> that, you guys the lost in translate you know what I, i'll figure it out after my point is this okay so a bunch of these mooks come in right they bash this place up they take the artifacts that are important and what they take one kid doesn't that seem a bit fresh? obviously they're trying to get at dr lee yeah well, if he has a lot of money all right if they're trying to get a dr lee let me ask you this why the fuck didn't they take dr lee he was here he's here now was, what happened an hour ago they said Perhaps. Dr. Lee is in control of his own money. What they need I is would... Dr. Lee's influence. Mm. Ah, you're right, Swan Lee. Very true. Like I'm just saying, if this was America, it would have been a bit, a bit different is all. They would have taken the guy in charge and they would have cut off his fingers until he did whatever they wanted him to do. Or kill the guy outright. Well, that's what I'm saying. See, you know what I'm talking about, BB. You and I, we speak the same language. Mm -hmm. Once again. Kill a man before he becomes trouble. Exactly. Look around you. We are not in America. Yeah, I know seafood. And I go Look, to the elevator. <laughs> we can stand here talking about what he may or may not have meant. Do you think his intentions are wrong? All I know is here's a guy that hired me off the street because I was a nobody. Do I give him thanks for that? Yeah, yeah, I do. But I also think it was a bit too convenient. Hmm. May was in on this. Who else is in on this? Didn't he hire May? He did. He also hired you. Perhaps we should not trust you, Jack. Listen, Kimmy, you don't have to trust me. I'm in it for the money. One reason only, all right? The minute that kid's back, I get paid and I'm out of here. I don't hold nothing against you guys. Let's just go get this job done. So they took his son, but they have not written to any demands to Mr. Lee. Dr. Lee, my apologies. <laughs> you hear from down the hall. No problem. <laughs> I didn't spend 15 years in medical school. <laughs> oh, Mister. Actually, I'm a doctor of journalism. <laughs> I, uh, Actually, he, he might be a doctor of curating. Ooh. <laughs> well, the artifacts. Archaeology. So I enter yes. the elevator and start pressing the button madly. Yeah, you guys head downstairs. Uh, are you interested in stopping at the armory or? Oh, yeah. Where are the... Uh, I got blue belt. That's all I need. Supplies. My body is in armor. Yeah, so uh, Sifu has the uh, key code, I guess, or at least the uh, clout to get past the security forces. Um, you have to go downstairs from the lobby and et cetera, et cetera, through a number of passageways and intimidating looking lighting fixtures mm. and whatnot. And there's, um, there's basically like a stockpile of uh, guns and explosives and a lot of kung fu weapons. Hmm. I'm just sitting there looking at everything. Is there anything here that's useful? Secret? Absolutely. And I grab my umbrella and I pop it open. <laughs> this will keep us dry should it start to rain again. <laughs> yeah, I dig it. And I walk over and I grab six grenades. Please. Jack. We're there to get a boy. We cannot walk in and speak of peace. And be armed with weapons. Hey, these I'm not saying these are for Benny. I'm just saying these are, you know. Like, you never know when you need a grenade, boys. Trust me. And while he's doing that, I walk over. I grab some more shotgun shells. And uh, slip them in my pocket to reload Lucille when I have a chance. Lovely. I mean, okay, I... great. Hey, uh, Sifu. While we're here and things are quiet, uh, right. I took a couple hits back there. You see my shoulders. It's a bit of a gash here in my suit. Uh, would you mind? Uh, can you do something about this? Yeah, 
And I hear you slapping your hands together. Is that, uh, <laughs> is that what you're supposed to be doing? And oh, I actually oh. push on it. Oh, oh. damn. Sifu. And the I bullet comes hit. back. Well, that, well, I don't know. There was a bullet in there. Oh, shit. I got hit with a machete. Wow, thank you. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> the machete comes out. <laughs> I will make you roll a, a medicine check for that or a yeah. healing, whichever you prefer. And the rules are that you are only allowed to heal once out of combat, but as many times in combat as you like. That's you know not, that, that is. Cool. It's the opposite. I like that. Yeah. All right, so I just roll one die, correct? Uh, you roll, you roll to get your swerve and then add oh. that to your action value. Get your swerve on, man. Yeah, get uh, that. Right. Well, let's, get it. let's see. Got a negative. <laughs> yeah, Lou. <laughs> so I got a 12. <laughs> Great. So that's 12, uh, wound points taken away from you there, BB. 12. Perfect. I'm yeah. back up. Ugh, I don't know what you did, Sifu, but I feel much better. I appreciate it. Thank you. Kim stands in the armory and stretches down to touch his toes, stomach flat against his knees. God, I wish I could still he, do that. He then, st <laughs> <laughs> he then stands up and looks at Jack and he says, mm. he responds to the, the comment, you know, Jack, not everything is, must be done for money or some sort of reward. In fact, the greatest word that you might be able to find is the reward within yourself that you gain when doing good things for others. Kim, I, I think you come from a sweet place, kid. I get it. I do. But listen, when you've been around the block as many times as I had, you realize that at the end of the day, people are really only out to help themselves. And you can either try <laughs> to stop it, or you can join in and play part of the part of the game and get paid in a way. You know. You speak as if you've been around the block so many more times than I have, Jack. <laughs> what are you, 25, kid? Actually, yes, I am. Yeah. But 25 here in rural China is much like 50 in America. You think I'm 50? Not saying that you're 50. Only that time here in rural China is much longer than it is in developed America. So you see, your age, no matter what, right. even if you were double my age, could be the same age as me right now. All right, kid. All I'm trying to say, Jack, is that you must learn to care and not just do things for money. You know what? You might have a point, <laughs> all right? But uh, it ain't going to be today, and it ain't going to be for some kid. So you grabbed a backpack full of grenades, Jack. How how many are in there? Six. All right. I've only, but I strapped one to my belt. Marvelous. Uh, so you guys are heading back up the hallway. The yeah, do, out do, through do, the lobby. Do, 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 do you have to sing that, Jack? Well, I wasn't playing. It normally plays in every elevator I've been in. Mm, yeah, yeah, that song is so popular, it just is on the radio all the time. Yeah, but they're trying to increase the feng shui of this place, not destroy it. Why oh, didn't you see I moved that plant? That's good enough. And we get yeah. out, I, I head into the lobby, and... Uh, Lily Chong is still polishing her desk with a frustrated look on her face. And I say, Keys, did you get the body up? Yes, I got the body out. Jesus, Jack. Thanks, Diana. And I take the keys. the keys. Perfect. Hey, look, and I walk in at the door. I'm like, we lived through this. We'll go on our second date. I promise. Promises, oh, promises. And I go and I pull up the car. Uh, okay, I want everyone who gets in the car to make a detective or police check, please. Oh. Do I get in the car is the question. <laughs> oh, shit. Who's driving? Jack? Maybe. Bear's driving. Oh, yeah. Jack. Fuck. Oh. <laughs> Uh, these explode as well, correct? What does? Yes. Yes, oh. yes, yes. Fuck! Oh, wow. BB oh, is very bad. I got uh, six and a six and a one minus three. So minus eight. Okay. BB, you crack your head on the roof of the car as <laughs> so you get into it. <laughs> ah, damn it. You're not driving the SUV anymore. I, I roll a four. I forgot. Did anyone get more than a five? I got a 12. Beautiful. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so it's like, bunk, bunk, bunk. Everybody's just hitting their head, getting in the car. <laughs> dunk, dunk. Okay. Um, Someone's as... got to put up that gif of the kids getting out of the tent, and they just keep... Oh, my God. Oh, that's yeah. You know, that's literally... the one I keep thinking of. Yeah. 
It's my favorite. Whenever I'm kind of down, like I'll go to the Reddit and I just watch all the kids fall and they're coming up. Yes. <laughs> So as uh, Tuswan Lee sits down, I r- imagine he's probably riding shotgun. What do you think? Sure. Shotgun, probably. Um, he uh, reaches down to buckle his seatbelt and realizes that there's a small cloth bag sitting kind of in the space between the two seats where the like parking brake is. Huh. Who realizes this? That's Sifu. Sifu. Jack. Yeah. Down here, there is something that looks unfamiliar to me. And as you pick it up, you hear from within the sack kind of like the click, like a, like a weird clicking sound. No, it's like it's like a couple of things like knocking together. Like it's kind of like a. Huh. I put it on my lap yeah. and I open it. Like uh, dice you, in a sack? You, yeah, kind of. You like tear it out of uh, yeah. Tucson Lee's hand. <laughs> oh, no, I didn't touch no, it. I was touching it. To yeah. it oh, I thought you... I wasn't familiar with it, but it's Jack's car, so it might be his. I just okay. tear it open. Right? I may have just never, never noticed it. Jack, you've never really put your hands on these things before, but they might be familiar to you. They are about the size of dominoes, and they're carved with flowers. Imagine them? Yes, Majon. Oh, yeah, and I reach in and I say, huh, and I toss the bag at the window. You do? <laughs> Just to be a dick. Great. What was it? I don't know. What was it? Just a bunch of Majon tiles. When I say that, yeah. that's a bunch of Majon tiles. Whoa, whoa, Jack, what are they doing in the car? I don't know. I didn't keep them here, and I start the car. Yeah, but they weren't here when we got out of the car. Yeah, true. Before you notice, I've already left the car, grabbed the tiles, and got back in. Oh man, the window's <laughs> open, and you just like you just like do a crunch, and your legs are the and then you're back in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. What, are you, what are you doing? What are you bringing those back in for? Whatever do you mean? <laughs> and I look, tiles. sitting in the back seat with uh, with BB, I open up the the bag. Yeah. Okay. Why they're Majon tiles? You uh, are you familiar? Have you ever played Majon tiles? Okay. I mean, Alex has never played Mahjong, but has Kim Luhan. It's probably one of the main uh, games oh. in China. Let's it, It's Google like it. Domino's, but a Chinese yes. version, so it's very popular. Yes, of course. He has. Um, ah, yes. So he has. Kim would recognize the four noble plants of Confucian reckoning. Would that be... Oops. Would that be these four noble plants? Right as soon as this picture opens up, right about now, zy wow, zy wow, zy. I love this. Come on. Why are you loading? <laughs> <laughs> Is it possibly these four? <laughs> Can you see that? Uh, those are, I don't think those are the four flowers. They're actual pictures of flowers. But... Oh, well, in that case, yes, he knows. Um, wonderful. I'm glad that we waited for that picture. <laughs> um, if you have knowledge Chinese philosophy or what, what are your knowledges, boys? Um, I, Eastern philosophy. I just haven't had Chinese that. philosophy. Great. So, uh, both of you can roll those if you'd like, uh, to try to figure out what's going on. And, uh, additionally, Kim, as you're turning the tiles over in your hands, you recognize that the characters that would represent each of your names are carved onto the backs, one each. Six, five. So I'm rolling another. Uh, that's right. You're going to roll another green one. So I had three. six and five, mm-hmm. and so eight and five. So that's three mm-hmm. plus eleven. It's great. F- Fourteen. Would you get Mike? Uh, Fifteen. Oh. Marvelous. Uh. You recognize these as the four noble ones, Kim, but uh, Sifu nods his head sagely in the front seat and says, Ah, yes, chrysanthemum signifies ease of life. Orchids stand for beauty and enlightenment and the innocence of children. Plum blossoms bloom amid the winter snow, principles and values of virtue, and bamboo has a long life. Principles of uprightness, tenacity, but a hollow heart. 
Haha, <laughs> which one am I? Hmm. Sounds like it could be a riddle. You uh, look for Jack Green? Are you going to help your buddy out or no? Which one's But of course. <laughs> uh... Sifu, if we had to place one of these on each of us, what would you suggest? <laughs> which one's got my name on the back? Uh, the one with Jack Green's name is the Chrysanthemum. Most oh, it actually has the names. Ease of life. Yeah. <laughs> you have to you have to put it on mic when she's saying it <laughs> Mike doesn't talk so the camera doesn't pull to him I know so you just have to put it on him I don't have yeah, something I'm not that quick alright um, so I drive to our um, spot oh so you only hear yours well we've yes. talked there yeah no I would, okay. I would on the way on the way you're I driving see. I can tell which <laughs> one is no, can't talk sorry sorry the sorry the Plum Blossom is inscribed with the symbols for Philip Castle. Uh, the orchid is Kim Lu. And the bamboo has Sifu's name on the back. Can you maybe send those descriptions? I will put it in our shared chat. Thank you. All right. And I'm driving to um, our little bar, which is like one that the um, they never know about, Lee's business. <laughs> We secretly went there one time after a job, the four of us, and we walked. And I park about a f few blocks away, and I'm like, all right, let's go grab a drink. And we all head out towards mm. the bar. Cool. Yeah. So you guys go to your uh, drinking hole. I mean, like, Sifu and Kim don't drink beer necessarily, or or um rice Ice. wine but you guys probably like get some get some food tea. some green tea yeah. green sit tea quietly and meditate and enjoy the, the conversation strongest rice drink that i could get yeah and uh, a kitty's actually there hey how old is kitty uh she's 18. <laughs> i slapped my knee kitty <laughs> hey jack us. what's up come sit down what? I am sitting. Yeah, come sit closer. <laughs> She's sitting at the bar with like two of her friends. Yeah, all right. Well, well, you do you then. And I turn to the guys and I'm like, all right, listen. We got to get a plan here. What's the actual address? We know it's a fish packing area, but what's the what's the plan? Just an unknown warehouse? It's just like five digits and, you know, XYZ Street. I don't know. All right, yeah. so there's no, it's not a business. Nah, I mean, it doesn't have the name of the company that owns the warehouse if that's what you mean yeah you could do that i'm gonna do that so i'm gonna be like oh, give me a second i'll walk up to the yeah there's right. like um yeah yeah hey uh chung phone book what what do you want phone oh book. hey jack yeah 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 phone book please no beer tonight yeah i got one Look, you just poured me you fucked I, you just got me one shut up i'm drunk i know you shouldn't be drinking that's it gets underneath the bar and puts the phone book down and then turns around and starts flirting with kitty yeah, hey, hey, she's a kid. She's like 18, all right? Hey. You got your phone book? Yeah, yeah, and I slide across. And before I go back, I'm like, yo, BB, you want the usual? Yes, please, sir. All right, give me a blind eye. And for us, too, if you don't mind, yeah, uh, Jack. Yeah, 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 just a minute, boys. Just bring him over, and I, bring the, I slap the phone book down, and I look up the address. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah, so it says, uh, hmm, what does it say? Um, Something Jay, business. it's J and J's Trout House. <laughs> okay, so J and J's Trout House. That's yeah. perfect. Hey, Kitty. Yeah, what's up? You ever been down to the Fish District? Uh, I mean, I know these streets. You know, I know these streets. I know you know those streets. We know you know those streets. Okay. So okay. I know that you know that they know that you know those streets. All right, boys. You know All right. Streets. I want to know about a particular warehouse, one by the name of, what did you say it was again, Jack? And I just point to it. And then I don't say anything. J&J's &J Trout House. No, J&J's and J's Trout House. You Thank my you. blind joke. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Rewind. Yeah, no, yeah, thank you, Kim. Thank you. I appreciate it. I wasn't being really jerked around all the time. I wasn't. J&J's uh, Trout House. I mean, there's so many friggin' warehouses down there. I don't know. I really Trout need house? you to. What kind of a fucking name is that anyway? Like it don't matter. You want to make twenty American dollars, and I open my wallet. Oh yeah. I know you do, and I wave it kind of. 
till she comes over. She's just looking at you. She waving me for. Cause I'm trying to get you. You know what? And I stand up and I hand it to her. I'm like, twenty Thank bucks. You. Go check out this address and tell me what they're wearing. All right? And I shove it not to somewhere in her hand. I shove her hand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shove it somewhere not yeah, in her. Not there, no. Yeah. Good. Just, uh, she's like, can I finish my drink first? No. I wouldn't pay you if you could just do it on your own time. Go. God damn it, Jack. And she heads out the door and hops on her bike and We want to know what they work you. what they work in. And Shut I, up. And I turn around <laughs> and I go back to the table and I'm like, look, we can't just walk in there. I mean, we gotta have a plan. Right. Know the ins and outs, the exits, the windows. Any way into the building possible. Maybe a uh, vent of some sort. I've used that before. Yeah, here's my thinking. I mean, ultimately, if May's there, she's going to recognize us on site. And it doesn't mean that we're going to get that far in. But maybe if they're wearing, you know, some sort of hats or something like that, we can at least get in past the front, get into maybe where Benny is. And once he's out, we can do whatever the hell we want in the place. You think it's going to be that easy? No, it's never that easy. Hmm. What do you think, uh, Sifu? Oh, that reminds me. Can I get some crab, too? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the guy comes around, he's brought you your food and tea, and you usually get a pack of smokes, Jack, and oh, some yeah. beer and whatever. I appreciate you asking my opinion. <laughs> For often I wonder... How you even come up with opinions amongst yourself uh, as a musician <laughs> do you not often appreciate the space between the notes there's not often a lot of space between the notes of the this three of your voices mm, the space between the notes the rhythm in between the stabs I know exactly what you mean damn Sifu you wise shit <laughs> what do you think Kim <laughs> What, what, is, what the fuck does that mean? You didn't even say anything. Do you like the plan or not? I'm totally confused. Kim? No, 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 Jack, you don't understand. No, this, I don't. This, this man is wise beyond his years. Uh, you, you would never understand the, the wisdom behind those words, Jack. Okay. Essentially, Jack, break it down. You talk a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, at least I say something. You must listen to those words that are not said. Mm -hmm. oh my God. Right, I have a belief. <laughs> I think that this man right here, with his wisdom, he's going to teach me how to put out the best music that people have never heard. Blues. Are we talking uh, about blues music unheard. or saving a kid's life? The door slams open and Kitty shows up. She's Thank red God. in his face and she's like, <clears throat> <clears throat> excuse me. Mm, sorry. God damn. Okay. Biked all the way there and back. <laughs> it's not that far, guys. No, He's sending no, me on this. Anyway, what you wanted to know what they're dressed up as. Yeah, uh, any other information you saw? They got uh, like coveralls, kind of brown, uh, mm. little hats, you know the type. Um, real bad smelling place. The front door's propped open. Mm. Uh, there's a loading dock around the side and around the back, leads out into the harbor. So there's docks back there. Uh, Two story building. Couple windows up top, couple windows on the bottom. Is that good? Yeah. Any uh, any nearby buildings, or is it a solo affair? There's an alley on either side, so yeah, warehouses. Sewer access. Excellent. Thank you very much for your work, Kitty. The sewer access. Sewer access? Yeah. I wasn't looking for any sewers. Did you see sewers out front in the alleys or not? I, it's Hong Kong, Jack. The sewers fucking everywhere. Yeah, well, I've only been here a month. All right. well, Jack, I think what you're doing is, uh, how do you say in America? Overkill. Hey, there's no such thing as <laughs> there are at least 12 points of line. entry. 12 points of entry that I've counted just based on what Kitty's reported back to us. That should be sufficient enough to enter the building without Thank being you, seen. Kim. Thank you. All right. One more thing, though, Kitty. You yeah, saw those overalls. You saw those hats. You need to take yeah. that 20 and go buy us four pairs of those. Mm, another 20? Yeah, you will when you come back. No. Nah. Let me do a, a convincing roll. <laughs> okay, let's see what that could be, maybe. Because Kitty's out here with her friends. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to give her a... You can do intimidation. Pitch. You could do seduction. You could do gambling. Um, let me do... Uh, 
not seduction, but is there like a like a charm or something? Uh, I mean, we could call seduction charm Let's and just that. flavor it differently. Yeah. Yeah. Or we could go seduction. Anyways, I'm using my um, bonus die too. Yeah, let's do it. Plus four, so seven, mm, so 11. She's like, you give me another 10 on top of that and I'll come back with four of those shitty uniforms. All right, and I give her another 10. And that's it, I'm tapped. She's like, I'll be back in a few minutes. Yeah, but when you come back, you buy me a beer because I paid you plenty. Fuck you, Jack. Yeah, fuck you too. And I sit down, <laughs> God, I love her. <laughs> Uh, okay, so she heads back out into the rain about 15, 20 minutes later. She comes back with a, a cloth parcel on her back. Uh, it's pretty much stopped raining, so it's not too damp, but it's, like, wrapped up in twine. She comes in the front door and, like, throws it down on your table. All your drinks kind of, like, jump and spill a little bit, and she, like, unwraps it. Here you go. Nice. Anything beer. else, mister? No, I think I'm good. Appreciate All right. It. Well, I'll be seeing you guys around. You yeah, know I always do. Your they look like real good guys. As yeah. per usual, I very much appreciate the work that you have done for us. Sifu and she bows. Look at Sifu. He's so polite, Jack. He's so polite. Polite? I'm the only person that just figured out how we're going to get in there. Politeness didn't mm. get us shit. All he said was, look between the lines. Yes, in fact, Jack, very well done. Great idea using Kitty the messenger to figure out what position we could hey, enter through. He gets it. Thank you. Never Actually, I think I thought the uh, I thought of the idea of the getting in speaking to Kitty. Actually, you're right, I BB. I take that I back. I I'm that. sorry, Jack. I take that back. I'll give that per that uh, to BB. Hmm. As you guys are discussing who is the better planner and who's who's come up with the most ideas, you hear. <laughs> A motor, like the sound of a motorcycle that sounds like someone kicked the muffler off of it, roll up to the bar, and then another couple. Do we recognize it? I'm going to roll out our roll. And another couple of motorcycles come up. Two, Two motorcycles Nine. go by. Nine. Do we recognize oh, it? I really wanted Alex to do more. <laughs> I roll a nine. Oh. You recognize it? The motors. You don't, you don't recognize a motorcycle okay. sound? No. <laughs> well, I don't know. Maybe it was like a significant. Oh, well, then that... more came, so it seemed less important. That was really funny. <laughs> uh, no, but uh, four tough guys come in, and uh, and Kim Lou, you recognize their jackets right away. <clears throat> These are it's some the Tiger Claw gang. Tiger Claw motherfuckers, and they want to party. I grab Jack by the collar and I pull him in hey. close. Jack. It's the Tiger Claw gang I was telling okay. you about at Dave and Dr. Lee's. Okay, I get it. And they, uh, they come We must out. take them down. In fact, we can use their uniforms. There's four of them and four of us. What? And I push him back. They right. elbow their way through Kitty and her friends to the bar and kind of- hey. and as they the elbow bar. Kitty, I'm like, hey, 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 hey. Guys. What? What do you mean, what? Oh, hi there, little man. This what big tough dude. Little man, listen. They're just having their drinks at the bar. There's no need to be dicks. Go get your drinks. Oh, we're getting our drinks, and then we're going to play some pool. That's fine. There's plenty <laughs> of space. And I look at Katie. I'm like, you all right? And Kim stands up and walks to the front door, standing between the front door and the Tiger Claw gang. And he says, hey, you, what do you think you're doing here? <laughs> what do you mean? This is our bar. You have a lot of nerve coming in here and showing your faces. They're very ugly. <laughs> Look who's talking with that little baby mustache you got going all on. All right, listen, everybody, just take <laughs> a step. Let's just take a breath, all right? You guys... One of the thugs walks up to the pool table and picks up a pool cue. All right, all right. Everybody calm the fuck down. Look, Katie, are you all right? Well, yeah, Jack, but these motherfuckers been here a couple days in a row now, and they that one grabbed my ass. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Which one grabbed your ass? That motherfucker. This guy beside her, he's got kind of like a shiner. And I walk up to him and be like, hey, your eye looks black. You want another one? What do you say, man? And I headbutt him. <laughs> All right. Uh, I want you to make an attack roll, and then we're going to roll initiative. Perfect. I'm going to use my uh, 
Uh, I love how I initiate and Arnold attacks. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the girl? Fair. The thing. I had to follow through. Fair. It's all cool. I'm just uh, joking. Two plus two to hit uh, and martial arts. So uh, 15. Yeah, you totally hit him. Um, what's your total? He's a mook, right? 15. Uh, no. They okay. are featured foes that I am going to cripple their um, moon points. Okay. So I... I guess that's not an improvised weapon, is it? It's just a headbutt, so it's unarmed, and I did yep. uh, plus two. Okay, so uh, he reels back, <laughs> and indeed, uh, blood seems to be kind of leaking out of the corner of his eye. <laughs> what the fuck, man? I'm gonna tear you apart. Ugh, and he, like, recovers. So everyone roll some initiative for me. All right. Three and six, nine. <laughs> Ooh, these guys are fast. Got ten. Okay. Excuse me. Anyone else? Oh, sorry. Initiative. Yep. Uh, I got Alex is on me. This one. You got fifteen. Thirteen. Thirteen. Fuck yeah, Alex. He's still on mute. Alex, buddy. Alex, you fuck. Ah, for the third time, sorry. You add it to your speed? I'm like, That's why correct. are you fucking answering me? Yep, roll a d6 and that's your speed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, I just got a, uh, whatever my speed, which is seven. Okay. Wait, you, you didn't roll a d6? No, I rolled two twos. Just roll one, buddy. Oh, I'm sorry. No, it's all right. We're all learning here. Well, no, no, no. No. A three <laughs> plus seven, <laughs> ten. Ten. Beautiful. Okay. So, Sifu, you get to jump on these guys. Now you can do what you wanted to do, buddy. <laughs> um. Oddly enough, I'm actually not going to do anything at this point. Amazing. Um, because these guys, we're we're on a different mission. Mm -hmm. They're a distraction right now, and I understand why Jack got involved and I understand why Kim wants to be involved but I don't really understand why I would need to be involved totally other than I will go over and stand between them and the girls okay so they don't get um I will say that they okay so the four uh gangsters kind of elbowed the way through kitty and her two friends right. so like kitty's on one side and her two friends are on the other right. side and there's four dudes in between them oh so they're all in the middle yeah oh uh, interesting but yeah because they like push the girls that. away from their bar stools to go to the bar but jack is kind of there because he just had butted the guy who's really jack bad. is with yeah with like beside kitty and talking to the one okay guy. then i'll go towards the other two girls and cool. i don't have anyone Near okay. them and just be. If you would like to take a defensive stance, that's a one shot cost. Then I will do that. Great. Uh, so you can add one to your defense uh, this round, or this shot rather, which is great because this is when your enemies are going to start trying to fight you. Um, so the one guy uh, walks over to the pool table and picks up a pool cue. Um, and tries, uh, I guess he walks back over and tries to wail on Marion, on Jack with it. Um, so, does a 10 hit you, Jack? It does not. Okay. Because he tries to headbutt me, I reel back and I kind of say, no, 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 no. No, he tries to hit you with a fucking pool cue. Well, he misses as I duck and he hits his own friend, but he um, <laughs> The guy who <laughs> tried to headbutt you uh, tries to sucker punch you in the face. And that's a 16. That will hit. Okay, so ah. what is your defense? 15. Okay, so that is eight wound points minus your toughness. So two. Uh, yep. Guy number three. Um uh, tries, or uh, I guess he sees that Kim is like kind of shouting down some threats, so he's gonna pull out a gun and just stand there and try to intimidate you. Uh, and that did not work. Hmm. I assume. 
What's your? I don't know if you have like a thing to counter intimidate. Defense. You just got defense anyway. Yeah. yeah. What's your defense, him? My defense, sorry, yeah. is uh, fifteen. Yeah, it didn't work. Uh, and third guy is going to try to land a punch on Sifu, and that is a nine, which I imagine misses. Now you're in it, Sifu. Cool, cool. Swan Lee. Uh, and all of them are kind of hurling insults your way. <clears throat> Sticks it and is uh, Sifu's turn again, if you'd like to act. Sure. Um, so, sorry, the guy that was hitting me, he was just using fists? Yeah, or... he just hauled off and tried to punch you. Okay, so what I'm going to do is uh, totally turtle like this. Mm. But what this does is it actually catches his elbow right here, so he can't actually get the swing, and that's why he missed me. Mm -hmm. and this turtle actually comes up under his chin. Oh, jeez. So to anyone watching, it looks like I'm just like trying to protect myself. Mm -hmm. And then I just step forward, driving this part of my elbow into this part of his throat. Whoa. Which collapses them to the ground, as long as the dice allow that. You got to roll first, friend. <laughs> you can see how excited Mike gets. <laughs> Your eyes are like, oh, I got this. <laughs> so uh, okay, so it's just a flat 15. Uh, yep, you hit by two. All right. And, and so be connect seven. with his throat. Great. Uh... No, it doesn't actually hurt him. It just, because what I'm doing is I'm just pushing him oh. down with it. I'm not striking him. I'm just, so it just makes him like fall down onto his ass. Okay, I None. will say that he, he'll he take a knee. Um, so that is, puts you at shot nine. Uh, okay, so BB and Kim, you're both on shot 10 right now. So I guess it goes to me. Mm -hmm. Okay, <clears throat> so I take out my nunchaku, my nunchucks. Nice. From my back, they're stuffed in my my boxers. <laughs> stuffed in my felt belt and my rope belt. That's where I'm looking for. And as I pull them out and start kind of fun swinging them around, I turn and lock the bar door. <laughs> oh, I understand you are part of the Tiger Claw gang. We need yeah. your outfits. And I immediately attack the guy in front of me by doing a car wheel and then uh, landing in front of him to, oh wait, that doesn't count because I had one selected and one and one. <laughs> All right, so I just do whatever the natural wheel of Whirl of Fury attacks for the rest of the fight so if I succeed, which I did, mm -hmm. damage value of 14 for the rest of the fight. Great. With my so your damage is 14. So and how much did yeah. you surpass 13 by? Great. So you deal 16 damage to the guy who had his gun pointed at you. Excellent. Um, and he uh, grabs his, uh, his broken cheekbone. I'm gonna fucking kill you. Um, I would like to see you try. <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> All right, BB. All right. Well, I feel my way out of the booth mm -hmm. and I make my way towards the rice wine or the rice beer. And uh, I stand next to Jack and I've got Agnes in my hands. And I say to the man standing in front of Jack, I say, you seen this guitar before? What, what do you mean? It's a guitar, you blind? It, well, actually, as a matter of fact, yes, I am. <laughs> Thank you for asking. And it ain't no regular guitar. You see this hole sticking out of the butt? And I aim the guitar right towards him and he can see the notched barrel of the shotgun sticking out of the wood notches on the side uh, mm -hmm. from all of the bounties I've collected this thing can put up can take your head clean off your shoulders all I gotta do is pull the trigger you wanna I make think, me do that I think you're bluffing me blind man 
I ain't bluffing. Watch this. And I tilt the guitar down and I fire at his foot. <laughs> okay. Make an attack. Or is it intimidation? No, it's an attack because I'm trying to do damage now because I got angry. I'm going to use a fortune die. Okay. Which guy is this? The guy with the black eye, the pool cue, the gun? The guy with the black eye. The guy in front of, or Uh, one of the guys in front of Jack. Jack, One who wasn't hit. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I'm using a fortune die on this. He is my quarry as well. Okay. So the guy with the pool cue is uninjured. The guy with the black eye took seven damage. Oh, okay. Well, I didn't roll yet. Okay. Doesn't matter. Oh, I see. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. So I rolled boxcars on two of Ooh. my rolls, but because I rolled a fortune die, it's a 10. Does that count? Or do I still explode one of them? Oh, another? interesting. Um, hmm. How do you want to play it? I would probably rule it that you count the boxcars and then add the fort- that four that you got for the fortune die cool. after whatever happens. So just roll two D6s again. All right, here we go. Oh, okay. So that's okay. <clears throat> but it's a failure three, no i'm gonna say because you rolled a four for your fortune yeah. you actually succeeded with a seven so you succeeded by two okay which means something really cool happens what happens all right so uh, the gun fires and the it echoes reverberating off the walls and some of the china behind the bar shatters with the sound of the man wails as he goes down to his knees and the smell of Shit fills the air hmm? as he poops himself. <laughs> nice. And I say, oh, Jesus, Jack, you smell that? So, yeah, sorry, I uh, couldn't hold it. No, uh, that was you? <laughs> no, sorry, it <laughs> must have been at the same time. <laughs> Ugh. And this man's totally, totally embarrassed. Yeah, let's call, I mean, you dealt damage to him as well. Let's just call him alive, but totally out Pooped. of this combat. Shell shocked. Oops. Wonderful. Uh, okay, so we are between our friend Jack Green and also Sifu. Uh, okay, so I'll go, mm-hmm. and uh, I'm going to man grab the black guy in front of you. Yeah, and I'm then... just going to reach right behind him and grab a beer bottle from the uh, from the uh, bar, smash it, and shove it up his in his throat. Hell yeah! Four plus, which I also get plus one martial arts when fighting with an improvised weapon. Nice gives me five, use of that. Anyway. 18 to hit. What to hit? 18. Yeah, <laughs> you hit by five. And I twist it as I do. <laughs> oh, <laughs> God. Messing with Kitty, huh? Is it uh, Kitty or Katie? It's Kitty, K-I-T-T-Y. So. Okay. And with the outcome of five, you get to <clears throat> choose something else cool. So I cut a piece of, of his skin out from between, right here, between his jaw. And as I pull it out, the blood speckles the face of a guy right beside him who just looks horrified. As I turn to him, the blood on my own face, and I'm like, you want a drink? Ugh. Okay, that's the guy. Uh, so the only other guy who was directly in front of you was the guy with the pool cue who pooped himself and he's lying on the ground. Right. So I will say that you sprayed blood on top of the guy who is menacing Kim. Perfect. Uh, who's being attacked with the nunchucks. Okay. There's nobody menacing me. Well, <laughs> you don't get menaced. Um, how, many, how much damage did you deal to that son of a bitch? 14. No, 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 I mean... Oh, sorry, Harlan? Yeah, Harlan. I rolled an 18, so uh, I don't know what a... I don't know what a uh, beer bottle would be. Mm, let's see here. A knife, Nine blah, 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 blah. Improvised? We'll call it 8 damage. Plus 5 is 13, so this guy is down for the count. Okay, so I literally so you... cut a piece of him out. Yeah, and he slumps Can backwards. I use my advantage so that Kitty is not thinking I'm a psychopath? Um, let's Somehow. take the advantage to say that you look over at Kitty and she grabs a bottle from behind the bar and smashes it too. Holy shit. <laughs> um, I just lock eyes with her as I twist the bottle in the guy's face. Like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> rock hard right now. So she's going to oh fight you now. I'm going to have her act on your initiative. So it's Kitty's turn or Sifu's hard. turn. Why don't you go Sifu? If you would like to act. Um, sure. Okay, so I've just got the guy that's on the ground right now, right? Yeah, that's right. Okay. 
so I will say uh, he springs up, kips up onto his feet, and then jumps up to do a flying jumping front kick, mm -hmm. um, which I kind of push the girls apart so that he doesn't actually hit them as he's coming through. Cool. And then I actually grab him by the belt and just pull him on the table. You just like smack him against the bar? Yeah. Beautiful. So he comes up. I kind of push them out as I get out of the way and just pull them back down. So Great. I'm just putting them right back on the ground again. You but know. does it happen? But does it happen? Hopefully it works. <laughs> it does. 16. Wonderful. You do it. Uh, and as I throw them down, I'm like, make better choices. Um, he kind of writhes in pain on the ground and then starts to try. Like, he's got one wound point left. He's trying to, like claw his way towards the door and then he looks up and he sees that Kim Liu is standing in front of him it's Kitty's turn um so we just have uh the guy with the nunchucks and the guy who's trying to crawl away Kitty uh looks at Jack with her fucking broken bottle and then looks at the guy who's trying to crawl away and she just runs over to him and she just stabs him in the back with the bottle is there any way I can prevent that? Uh, no. no. Okay. <laughs> um, we could just... Any way I can support it? <laughs> <laughs> Since this guy's a sitting duck, which means he has no real chance of trying to dodge out of the way, he's just going to take that hit. Um, and he is out of commission. So the final guy is frantically trying to defend himself against the flurry of nunchuck blows uh, at, that are being rained down on him by Kim Liu. Um, and he's going to try to land a hit on you. Why and am I fucking uh, rolling? 11. Does so that work? Against me? Yep. A 15? No. Does not work. No, no, no. No, 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 no. I like to think maybe you're just like put a hand on his forehead and hold his six like, swinging at you. No, I prefer I prefer to be lightning fast movement. So okay. I'm just like, do like dodging it as if I'm Neo. I'm just like, just like watching whop, 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 watching whop, 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 whop. it go by me. Beautiful. You're too fast for this guy. Uh, and it is your turn. Okay, so with him moving like this. Mm -hmm. I'll roll first, actually. Okay. <clears throat> oh, that didn't work. So I've got a, what's that, three, negative three to my 15, so that's a 12. No, that misses. Okay, so I will not be able to do what I was intending, which was to um, restrain him. Mm, mm. But... Uh, I guess that didn't work. And I end up walking into his flying nunchuck. <laughs> uh, now come here. Whack. Oh, ow, 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 ow. And it does <laughs> what? Eight damage? To you? Yeah. Or I just fail. You just I fail. Just... Oh, okay. So I don't. Yeah. He repels you with his fists. Uh, and it is BB's turn. B BB's turn. That's me. That's you. <laughs> you can <Maybe>. see. <laughs> Whoa. You, uh, you heard uh, Kitty run over her delicate footsteps you know well uh, and stab a man to death. <laughs> and then you hear the footfalls of your friend Kim kind of being uh, repelled by uh, one attacker and the rest of the bar seems to be fairly silent. All right. So I'm going to stick my hand into my pocket. I'm going to pull out one of my signature guitar picks that has BB engraved in gold lettering. It's not real gold. And I'm going to whip it from where I stand. Look at, not even looking in the right direction. I'm whipping it. And I'm going to try to hit the guy in the, somewhere where it's not going to kill him, but somewhere where it's going to throw him off balance. Sure. So Kim can get him. Maybe like under the armpit or something. In the knee pit. In the yeah. knee pit. Perfect. So I aim down that way and I throw my guitar pick. And the stats for that, do you remember what they were, Joe? Uh, we were going to call it the same as a throwing star. So it's got a five damage value. Five damage value. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead. And it's martial arts for yeah, the we'll attack? Yeah, we'll call it that. All right. And I'm going to use a fortune die as well. Wonderful. 
Boom, 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 boom. All right, so we got a seven over a five, so a plus two uh, to a 12, so 14. Great, yeah, you hit him uh, by one, so that's six damage, and that is enough to put him on the ground. All right, so he falls to one knee, and I say, he's all yours, Kimmy. And that's it. Yeah. (laughs) Kim is muted, but... Thank you very much. We'll defer defer to him. Can I go? Uh, Or or do I I have to wait? I'll defer. We'll we're out of initiative because you subdued the last bad guy. If you want him to still be alive for questioning yeah. or for uh, some dramatic dialogue. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So I get on top of him. He's lying face down on the floor. I get on top of him. And I put my nunchucks around his neck. He's and crying. I, <laughs> and I pull it tight. Not so he's choking, but so I've got him. And I say, where is my brother? Pan Luhan. Where is my brother? Pan. Where is he? Pan. Brother. Pan Luhan. Uh, he's with the tiger ga- tiger claw what what do you mean there's like bubbling snot and blood coming out of this guy's nose and shit. what do you mean he's with the tiger claw gang what do you mean he is he's one of us what do you well I mean I know he was forced to join you but where is he where can I find him he's my brother do you think GPS has been invented I don't know <laughs> where is your hideout tell me now uh, and he uh, he makes reference to a building that you recognize, kind of actually near the market where the Ooh. flower girl that you like lives. And I walk over and I and I pull Kim off. I'm like, Kim, Kim, Kim. No, no. And he's holding me back. And although I'm so strong against enemies, I just can't seem to push back Jack. Listen, listen. <laughs> Kim, no, stop. Buddy, no. Buddy, it's okay. Everything's gonna be all right. There's no reason. And as I'm talking the grenade that's on my belt falls off. We're oh, going to no. question him until... Oh, shit! Get out! And I, we run out the door. <laughs> <laughs> and it's locked. And so there's a, a second of panic. <laughs> as we talk oh, my God. Oh, God. And, and like, Kimmy's, like, slow motion, like, no! And like, I unlock I'm the sorry, door Kimmy. and push out. And yeah. as I scream, everybody get out of the fucking bar! It explodes, uh, and we all book it. go midair. We're like this. No! <laughs> Everybody do it. Everybody do it. I think that's the end of the episode. (laughs) That's right, ladies and gentlemen. That is the end of Feng Shui episode one. (laughs) Thank you, Joe. Fantastic job to Joe, the GM, uh, who told a fantastic episode tonight. Thank Um, you, gentlemen. Fantastic job to the uh, community who chatted along uh, the entire time. It was so entertaining. (laughs) Thank you to uh, the uh, players down below for telling a fantastic story as well. Uh, But it's not over yet. Of course, there's end game XP. So. I think I polled just a few minutes ago, and I think most people are in agreement that Mr. Mark Lane deserves it. Mr. Strapped for cash. So, well done, man. Oh, Fantastic job. Lots, yeah. of, lots of hilarious responses and ideas. So, well, well <laughs> done. Um, let's give it up one last time for Jay. It feels really Amazing. good to be Amazing. in the GM seat. I'm yeah. happy to be here. Well, it is the first of many, 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 many games. So. Um, that being said, next week <laughs> we are not doing Feng Shui. It'll be just a week break. We are coming right back to these crazy characters in uh, in two weeks. But next week we are running. Should we tell them, Justin? Yeah, I might as well tell them. We're going to be running the second ever episode of Darkest Dungeon of PG. Oh yeah, yeah. So uh, hopefully you guys can make it. Hopefully the players. Uh, you guys can make it as well, and uh, it's going to be a fun time uh, in the dark abyss of the darkest dungeon. I just have to remember what I was wearing. And, <laughs> and I have to remember my character. Do <laughs> you still have the mask? Yeah, yeah I do. Nice. It's right we'll here. See. And uh, yeah, and we'll see. Maybe Chris will come back next week, although his, his, they're being very close to their due date, so you mm-hmm. might see a little Chris be coming in. Oh, yeah, soon. he's writing that exam. That's what I meant, too. <laughs> <laughs> the baby exam. Anyway, exam of life. <laughs> so uh, thank you so much for hanging out with us. Uh, hope you guys have a fantastic night and a fantastic weekend. And as my friend Joe always likes to say, 
see you around the table. We will see you around the table, guys. Good night. <laughs> Good night. Good night.